welcome. Welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight's presentation. It's going to be all about how to take care of the school boards. There's two rules to the College of Complexes. The first one is one fool at a time. The second one is no personal attacks. So that means I can't right. go. All right. And uh, the college consists of the following format. The first part is we have a brief announcements period, which will not be recorded. The second part is we'll have our presentation. The third parts are question and answer period. And the fourth is our infamous rebuttal period where everybody will have a set amount of time to speak on or off subject. But with that, we generally wrap up about nine o'clock or so. And if our speakers have to leave early, just please do. But we'd recommend that you stick around because you will get the last word. And with that, Charlie, go ahead with the announcements. All right, let's welcome our speakers tonight to another, uh, to another round of our College of Complexes. So the uh, floor is yours, share screens, and let's go in. Okay. Um, I, I don't know who these other two are. I'm just gonna. Okay, go ahead and just. Uh... Oh God damn! I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Go go ahead and start. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to find it. I, I don't know what what happened with all that. Uh... Hang, on, hang the, on. On the bottom. Yeah. No. Okay. Oh. We just had it up. Try it again. Okay. Latricia, are you there? Okay, that's all right. Well, if it goes black, I think I know who to remove, so we're good to go. There it is. All right, share screen. Go ahead. And we got okay. like said, 30 minutes, right? Yeah, cut me up for 30 minutes. Okay. So, <laughs> so. What, what Jason and I have been focusing on for the last 10 months is all the diff disinformation that's, that's happening at school board meetings. We attend our local school board meetings and listen to a lot of the nonsense that's being presented. Um, what we want to talk about tonight is there's a difference. There's misinformation, and we are going to focus on disinformation. Misinformation is just a mistake. Guys, I'm blacked out, so there we go. Okay, so we, we focus on disinformation, which is information created to be deliberately deceptive. Okay, so what are the issues that we see at school boards? Well, when we first started, it was mass vaccines, all, all these things. We've added parental rights, uh, indoctrination, book banning, uh, this health education. Um, but actually, these just tend to be dog whistles to get parents involved. Um, What's it really about? It's about taking control of the school board, followed by control of the school curriculum, basically, because they don't want anything talked about, um, any, anything about slavery, et cetera. If you don't talk about slavery, you can't really effectively talk about how the constitution was written. So that's, a, that's, a, that's one huge basic problem. It's about getting candidates elected to the board who can then run for higher offices. Um, I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, it's, it's some there's. Leticia started. We we got it. We got it. We're getting rid of her. Yeah, good. Try no, no, Tracy, just a second. Yeah, I know. God. Just a second, please. I'll get. God. God. It's a mm. troll. I I I. I it's Tim, why are you letting these people in? You know who our group is. Why would you let anybody in that's not in our group? Exactly. Good question. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I'm trying to, because there's people who Get are. Rid of Shakisha. Get rid of Shakisha. Hey, hey guys. Let, get let, rid let, of Fred. Let, hey, quit allowing these fuckers in. Hey, okay. Let, let, let me get started again, okay? You guys can deal yeah. with that separately. Shakisha is somebody who's here and he's looking at it. Shimmer. Okay. Okay. So Sorry, Jim. Okay, here, here we go. It's about getting uh, parents to remove their kids from public education to enroll them in private schools. That's for profit. And one of the things that we're going to talk about is indoctrination. There are well-funded organizations that, that have this stated goal 
to get kids out of public schools into private schools. What they're trying to do is dismantle public education. Okay, I'm just gonna go through this. There's a list of, here's just some of the groups that we have profiled over the, over the last 10 months. I'm not gonna, some of these we will highlight in, in the meeting tonight. So this is from the Illinois Association of School Boards. What is the job of a school board? It's to provide local citizens control over education at a point as close to the parent and child as possible. That doesn't mean that the parents actually influence directly what's going on in the school. What, what we, we live in a representative democracy, which means we elect, elect representatives to be our, our, you know, our spokesperson. We elect a school board. That's God, guys, this, this is useless. People out here. Would you yeah, guys, this is this is unbelievable. We've never had this. Problem. Okay. You know, I think if this happens again, I'm just going to quit. Yeah, Tim, okay. We're letting these people in. Yeah. Can you stop? Can you disallow screen sharing except from the few hosts? Maybe. No. It's so uh, anybody can hack can get into this group because it's a Zoom on permanently on the website. That is wrong. Right. You should not have it on the website. That's really stupid and invites people to act. You got to have it sent out by email. And right. you don't invite everybody in the world to this to this show, forum. to this forum. That's very dangerous. Yeah. Terrible. Okay, so, uh, so I'm just I'm going to keep going here. Um, so Christopher Rufo is the person that started all this nonsense with critical race theory. He, he's an analyst at a place called Manhattan Institute, which is a conservative think tank. Um, and he's the ideological person behind Trump's executive order uh, banning critical race theory, which is not taught in, in K through 12 schools. It's just not, okay? Last March, Rufo stated that he wants to run a public persuasion campaign that will conflate any number of topics and convert, deposit them in this new bucket called critical race theory. So, so critical race theory is there. It's been co-opted to mean what they want it to mean. It has it has does it doesn't even come close to what the original critical race theory is all about. That is a college level, uh, usually a master's level course. Okay, and here's what he says. We've successfully frozen their brand, critical race theory, into the public conversation. We will eventually turn it toxic, which they have done, and include all the cultural insanities under that brand. So you can see what they're trying to do. They are good at creating fear. And that's the whole point of what they're trying to do. If they create fear, people will vote for what they say. What the way, where they want it. That's the disinformation. So here's more from Christopher Rufo. School districts have added diversity and equity training for years. Trump's presidential election in 2016 changed all that. Okay. In September of 2020, just two months before the presidential election, he ordered an end to diversity and equity training for all federal contractors. And that only happened after Rufo was on uh, Tucker Carlson's Fox News show. And he's trying to equate equity and social justice with critical race theory. Okay, so the guy who brought us critical race theory, who is Christopher Rufo, he now is saying he wants to defund, defund public universities. He wants to discard academic freedom. He wants to remove credentialing requirements for K through 12 teachers. And the reason for that is so they can get anybody to stand in front of a classroom and teach what they want taught. And again, what they're pushing for is privatization of ed education. There's two reasons. They wanna teach what they wanna teach and they wanna make a profit. Okay, so here's, here's some things that uh, Ru Rufo is saying that they can fight back. They convince the public that there's that the left has had a long game of infil infiltration 
educating everyday conservatives about ideas like diversity and inclusion that are actually code words, which of course they are not, uh, and, and offering a moral set of arguments and language in opposition. So what, what these groups do is they come up with something like this, diversity and inclusion, that's a bad thing. And then they come up with this, all this disinformation, say, when you go to your school board, here's, how, here's what you want to say, okay? He's praising DeSantis uh, for what, what he's doing with, with Disney down there. And if come you on think, in. Hello. Okay. Okay. So we'll keep going. So I know if you guys remember Stephen Miller, he was in the Trump administration. He is now president of this group called America First Legal. Um, and they are, uh, they have filed an open records request, which here in Illinois, we call it a FOIA request, Freedom of Information. And they want all the records, all the documents, communication relating to, relating to the development and impl implementation of critical race theory between Pacific Education Group and a school district. Keep in mind, when that happens here in Illinois, and that's something that Joyce and I focus on, is our, our school districts are being inundated from these people with FOIA requests for things just like this. And it takes the, the administration time from what they're supposed to be doing to track down all this information, and then it has to be reviewed by legal, okay? He issued the following statement. Now, AFL is committed to defeating the illegal equity. And there's nothing illegal about an equity agenda. I don't know where he gets that from. But see, if these guys state that enough, then people start to believe it and they get concerned. Well, you can't have an illegal equity agenda in my school. So, and th they want to get rid of this poisonous ideolo ideolo ideology that, uh, you know, they, they, they think is being forced on, on students. I'll keep going so I can get through this. There is a small college in Michigan. It's called Hillsdale College. It's a Christian school. It has a total enrollment of about 1,500 people. So this college is smaller than many of the high schools in this area. But what are they focusing on? Conservative movement, moving, it, it's, it's quite li li literally the epicenter, epicenter of book banning, anti-vax, critical race theory, climate science deniers, okay? The institution says the January 6th insurrection was a hoax. I don't know how they can say that when we have videos of it, but that's th this is the kind of disinformation that they come up with. And they claim that, that Putin is a hero. Hillsdale's patriotic education. Now, I want you guys to think about patriotic education. What happens in authoritarian countries? Patriotic education, because the government wants to educate you the way they want you to think so you're on their side. The conservative college, again, here's more, here's more on, on, on Hillsdale's. Uh, you can see Justice Clarence Thomas has visited there. He calls it a shining city on a hill. They're making efforts to go beyond its campus. What they wanna do is create charter schools, which again, charter schools are generally not regulated, but they're funded by taxpayers, but the taxpayers have no say in what goes on at that charter school, but they're, they're trying to get, they're, they're trying to make that happen. And here's in Tennessee, this Governor Lee, a Tennessee Republican, wants the expansion of charter schools as part of his effort to de develop an informed patriotism. Think authoritarianism when you hear that. Okay, this is something that happened in a main school. The superintendent of the, of the school um, was, he, he's kind of blindsided. He, he, didn't, he, he didn't think that there was anything to this indoctrinating his, his children. But to him, the issue was straightforward. The district had denounced white supremacy in the wake of George Floyd's murder. Um, and they did not teach critical race theory. Um, there, isn't, uh, there isn't a school in Illinois, a public school that teaches critical race theory. Okay, so this is what, what he said. He was very naive in, in, in the beginning and he, 
he, he thought it was just a concerned parent who would take things a little too far, but he didn't realize until it was too late. Then he had to, he, he had to control it. They were trying to discredit the entire school district. Okay. Critical race theory has become a proven grounds for, for the GOP. What they're trying to do is get parents involved. Like I said earlier on, it, it, it's kind of a Trojan horse, all these issues. What they want to do is grow the ranks of Republican politicians. Um, it's the local races outside the spotlight of the elections that they're focusing on. That's why they're focusing on school boards. They're also focusing on library boards associated with book banning. Well, so well, some well, elections are supposed to be nonpartisan. The Republican Party is making it a partisan issue. Education should not be partisan. Education, if you want to teach history, teach true, unsanitized history. Okay, the critics are right. Critical race theory panic is just a cover for silencing educators. It became clear that critical race theory was being invoked as a scare term. Now, remember I said earlier, they want to invoke fear into parents so that they can not say, oh, you can't let them talk about critical race theory. You have to, here's our agenda. Okay, um, and just and included in this is LGBTQ. Um, you know, those those they're just kids. There's nothing that that you can change. That's the that's the way they are. Okay, critical turns out that, that liberal critics were right and conservatives were lying. Critical race theory was in fact just a scare term. Again, here's Christopher Rufo again. He is bragged about inventing the use of critical race theory as a scare term. He has tried to deny that the book Mouse, as you guys heard that it, it's it's one of those uh, uh, illustrated novels. It, he, he said it's not being yanked because it's of Holocaust denialism. He insisted they just wanted a better book. Well, educators have said, this is one of the best books we can use. Okay, wealthy Republicans are trying to raise money to train candidates to run for offices. They're trying to start a second Tea Party movement. Right wing, okay, again, they're trying to take over school boards. You, you'll see this in many of the slides, many of these organizations. Um, now think about, they use the term patriotic Americans. If you guys remember the insurrection on January 6th, the people who were involved refer to themselves as patriots. Patriots who are trying to upend a legitimate election that was held and elections are the foundation of our democracy. Now, this is something that uh, a campaign manager in a Republican campaign manager uh, for a school board candidate in, uh, in Connecticut. She made the comment that helping kids of color to feel that they belong has a negative effect on white Christian conservative kids. In other words, she's saying it's a net zero thing. In other words, if we bring these kids of color to make them feel better, then the white conservative Christian kids are going to have to feel worse about themselves. That's not true. A rising tide floats all boats. So if everybody feels better, everybody works together, this is, it's a good thing. So th this is, and then she, she referred it to critical race theory. Um, she said it was poorly worded. She said it was taken out of context. I don't know if that, that statement is a quote taken out of context. I don't, I don't see how it makes any difference. The, uh, she, she tries to mop up the mess by saying she was just there to say she, she was there to support staunch Judea Christian values or simply conservative thinkers. Why, why are Judeo Christian values better than um, Jewish or Muslim? You, you, you know, there, there's other religions. Okay, the school board chairman basically said he wasn't sure how her comment could be, uh, you know, positive in any context. There's another group, Family Research Council. Okay, he's trying to start a, a grassroots up, uprising. Again, they're calling it grassroots. This is a national organization. He's trying to call it grassroots. None of these things are grassroots other than they're trying to get local parents involved to be their spokesperson locally. 
Okay, FRC is a uh, Family Research Council, is focusing on national expertise on key local elections. Again, that's why they're focusing on school boards. Okay, the religious right is, is, is awash with uh, restricting teaching about systemic racism. racism. Um, under the guise of protecting children from the supposed threat or critical race theory, the campaign against teaching about racism has taken on incendiary right-wing media, okay, attacks on teachers. And this is, this is attacks on not just teachers, school, school officials, school board members. School board members have been harassed to the point where they quit. They can't take it anymore. Now, again, I said before everybody got on, Joyce and I have experienced this at the point where when we attend school board meetings, based on some of the things we, we say, we have to be escorted to our cars, either by administrators or, or police. It's about critical race theory. They're trying to inflame resentment and mobilize conservative white voters. This is all about white supremacy, guys. It's all about white supremacy. In the hands of right-wing activists, pushed by the Fox network, Tucker Carlson and former President Donald Trump, are, they're, they're, they're pushing the Christopher Rufo definition of critical race theory. It has actually lost all meaning as what it was originally designed to be. Instead, it's become an all-purpose label for which to smear teachers label uh, and liberal uh, politicians as anti-white. Again, just because you wanna help kids of color doesn't mean you're anti-white. It means you want to help kids of color. End it, there. it doesn't mean we're Marxists. It doesn't mean we're American haters. Okay, so this is something that a, uh, uh, I want you to look just, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you see my pointer, but this is a photograph from the January 6th insurrection. Here, you can see, you can see that, that, that thing that says Jesus saves in the march. This is on a, on a cross that this guy is carrying. So this is the, the Christian nationalism in January 6th. But here is a pastor who's basically saying for our congregation, it's our opportunity. We have to be a counter to this white Christian nationalism. So just, this is not Christians in general. This is the group that's called white Christian nationalism. So be careful, to, be careful to make a distinction there. Okay, so uh, this is the Koch Network. Uh, there's a group called the Independent Women's Forum. It's another group. They put a template letter out to all, all their, uh, you know, anybody that wanted to use it to, in order to take uh, and go talk to their school board. Um, heartfelt, the heartfelt appeal is not the product of grassroots groundswell. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to say again, this is not, these are not my words. These are the words that come from the, the website that's down at the bottom here. And again, this is, this is funded by the Coke fortune, independent women's network, which we just talked about patriotic women. Again, be careful with the word patriotic. They have their own meaning. And the same thing with freedom. They don't mean freedom the way we think about, most of us think about freedom. What they are saying with freedom is they don't wanna be held down or directed by any laws or guidance from a gov government. They wanna do whatever they wanna do, teach kids whatever they wanna teach. So here's, here's another group, Parents Defending Education. Um, they are school privatizers. They're attacking school boards, superintendent, principals, teachers, parents defending education, another fake operation, acting for right-wing billion, billionaires, because that's who's funding them. Another coke investment. Again, I'm going to try to go kind of fast here. But here, they, are, they want people to turn in any teacher or school that offends you. Sounds a little bit like the McCarthy era, right? When anybody could accuse anybody of being communist and all of a sudden you were blackballed, this is what they're trying to do. This is what's happening behind the scenes. And this is why Joyce and I are trying to make people aware that this is actually going on. Okay, here's a group, American Legislative Exchange Council. I assume you guys all know about this group. Um, it's one reason that a lot of legislation that you're seeing in a lot of um, 
yeah, a lot of state legislators is is very similar because these guys write it, they hand it off to a local legislator, and and then they this local legislator, uh, you know, takes it to their 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 legislature. Um, there's a group in Naperville. Shannon Adcock ran for the school board. She, I, again, she was fighting against critical race theory. She lost. She lost badly. She didn't like that. So she started this group, Awake Illinois. They're trying to educate parents about the existential threat of critical race theory. They launched a, a website. You can go to this. Um, be careful when you read it. If you read what they're saying, it's in a lot, of, a lot of cases, it sounds like they're there for good things. They're not. Illinois Parents Union. Um, again, I'm going to go through this quickly. Um, again, this is all the organizations that uh, Illinois Parents Union is associated with, and Awake Illinois is one of them. There's a group called Leadership Institute, and what they're trying to do is train the next generation of conservative candidates for school boards. So this is a multi multifaceted approach to taking over school boards. Turning Point USA, this is a group that, that Joyce and I found that our local community college had a chapter of Turning Point USA. We made them aware that Turning Point USA was holding uh, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse up as a hero. They had him at, at one of their, their conventions They hit with a cape. They made a big, they made a song about him. And when, once we told the, uh, the, the college about it, uh, the college then decided to make a change to their website and say they have no affiliation with any of these clubs. So they did a, a disclaimer. Uh, they backed away from supporting this, but it was su supported in 2012. Charlie Kirk went to Prospect High, high School. He graduated high school. This uh, billionaire, Bill Montgomery, heard him speak and said, I'll fund you if you want to start this organization. So that's how it started. Um, it's, a, it's, it's closely aligned with Prager U, which is very right wing. Uh, uh, it's not really university. That's what they call it. Okay. Turning Point USA has grown. They are expanding all over the place. Um, here's some of the funding for TPUSA. Look at this. Bruce Ronner, Uline family. Um, Donors Trust is Coke. He just has a different name for it. No left turn to education. Education, no indoctrination. I want you to think about this. If the students are in a private, private school, that's the ideal place for indoctrination because the private school is not regulated. We support education and no indoctrination in the public schools. Educate yourself, find out who the organizations are who are poisoning our children's minds. This is what they have on their website at this No Left Turn on Education. There's no chapters in Illinois yet. This is as of August. Uh, it's about a half find... hour. Okay, thanks. I, I, I got a couple more. Here's, here's the indoctrination. Uh, there was something at uh, elementary school. Here's what these people were doing. Grade school kids walking to the school, parents lined up on the first couple of days of school last September and harass elementary kids walking to school because they were wearing masks. Okay, I'm gonna skip a bunch of this. Um, one thing we have to realize though, is groups like Three Percenters, Proud Boys are starting to attend school board meetings. That's very concerning, should be concerning to all of us. I would like you to give you about another five or 10 minutes, please, just to go ahead and finish up, please, if okay. you don't mind. Okay, so, so here's one of the issues that, uh, and if you remember Betsy DeVos. Betsy DeVos for years has supported privatization of schools. She supports this thing called Natural School Choice Week. It's not what you think. It doesn't mean, you know, you can go to this great school or that school. It's great. What she wants to do is go to her private school so she can educate you the way she wants you to be educated. Her mission as a nation's top educator is to expand school choice, school choice for private schools. So here's, here's, here's one of the final slides. This is from the uh, 
uh, National Education Association. Uh, it was in their December magazine. So what happens? How, this, this is, this is the, the procedure. What they do is they use the media to drum up a culture war, uh, fear, whatever, around race or gender issues. Then they win elections by stoking voter fears around these issues. If you remember the no November election in Virginia, where uh, uh, the, the governor won because he was, he, he was telling parents if he wins, he was going to stop the teaching of critical race theory in all of Virginia schools. Well, they weren't teaching critical race theory, but nobody bothered to check. But he still he, he won. Uh, they frame attempts to up, up, update the curricula as a radical attack on American values. American values are white supremacy values. Okay. Then they demand vouchers, which is effectively defunding public schools so that they can pay for their charter schools and their, and their uh, private schools. And then they support politicians who are going to, you know, come full circle with all this. So this is what the uh, NEA president said, these are dangerous attempts to stoke fears and, and rewrite, rewrite history. They not only diminish our, in, the in, injustices experienced by generations of Americans, they prevent educators from challenging our students to achieve a more equitable future. Okay, so you know, the, some takeaways. The dis disruptions at our school board meetings today are not grassroots in inspired. I hope you, from me going through just some of these groups that are putting out this disinformation, this that's where it's coming from. The parents are not doing this. The parents hear this stuff from these organizations and, and then they parrot it back at the school board. To well-funded organizations with the goal of taking over the school board and dismantling public education. Remember, they want to dismantle public education. If you go to some of these websites, you will actually see that word used, dismantle public ed education. They harass and intimidate the common sense board members, causing them to resign. Last year, two board members resigned in, in, uh, in St. Charles. Uh, those are the ones that we know about. Know about. Uh, the other thing that, that concerns us is because of all this harassment and intimidation, it's keeping good candidates from running for the school board or the library board. And the religious right is deeply involved. So I'll turn this over to Joyce. Uh, thank you for letting me go a little bit over. Okay, Joyce, the floor is yours. So uh, please let us go and uh, and, and, and per, let us let us uh, go ahead is what I'm saying, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jim, for all that great information. Um, I am a product of public schools, as I suspect most of us are. I have children in public schools. And um, yeah, my goal is to continue to have strong public schools and support um, all children so that they can reach their full potential. Um, Joyce, so, can, can, can you go to full screen, please? Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you. Um, so Jim display, you know, he presents all this information from all these sources on what's happening in our public schools, why they're under threat, why we are having to deal with lies, disinformation, why we're people are, there's such civil discourse that people like us who are there, um, you know, to, to speak about what's happening in our schools are having to be escorted and being threatened at school boards. That is not acceptable, um, you know, civil discourse, clearly. Um, so this part of it is really what can we do about it? How do we um, how do we basically confront this disinformation and go to protect our public schools? Again, as Jim mentioned, um, school boards generally across the country are nonpartisan. Um, I was on vacation. I live in Illinois. I was on vacation in Colorado. Exact, I picked up a newspaper, exact same issues on school boards. So clearly this is not grassroots. It's much bigger than that. It's being organized, as you said, you know, from all those sources, it's being organized from uh, basically a national level. So ways that we confront this is I, I kind of grouped it into three areas, prepare, share, and be there. So prepare is really um, knowing what your school board is dealing with. If you don't have kids in the school district, um, I argue that it's still super critical that you know what's happening in your school district. Um, 
you're paying taxes and, and you should have a, you know, a, a school district that's working well for your community and all the students and families in it. Um, and, um, you know, you may have grandkids, you may have kids, but either way, this is your community and you, and you should know what's happening in your school districts. I always say school board meetings should be the most boring meetings on the planet and they have been um, concerning and ugly and very confrontational. So um, first step is part of being prepared is understanding what your school district is uh, facing. You, most school boards now, they either live stream their videos, uh, their school board meetings, and most of them are, are kept online. So you can actually do some checking. And, and if, you know, if you go back after the fact, you can even you know, go through it quickly and see what's going on at those school board meetings. Uh, understanding who your school board members are. Um, if you, I've been going to school board meetings for many years um, as a concerned parent and community member, I was interested in what was happening. Um, if you want to know who your school board members are, you can look at a few of those videos, get a good sense based on their conversation, how they vote. You can talk to somebody that you trust who um, has been going to school board meetings, um, and you can certainly do some searching to find out who, who these folks are. Um, find out about school board curriculum policy. So again, this, this stuff about CRT and you know that kind of stuff um, is not taught in, in lower education. It's only taught in higher education, and even that is not you know, every school, every college is not teaching that. Find out about your school district's equity or wellness program. So equity, um, a lot of school districts now have been in the last few years have been promoting a, um, an equity program. This means making, again, giving every, every kid a chance to succeed, regardless of their race, regardless of their gender identity or their sexual orientation. It's, it's basically, you know, equity for all. Wellness programs tend to focus on um, health, sex, sex education, um, you know, consensual sex, um, healthy relationships, and um, sexual identity and sexual orientation, making sure that everybody feels safe and heard in their, in their school. Look, you can look up your school strategic plan. Um, if your school does not have a strategic plan, I suggest you contact your school board of education and ask them why they don't. Um, if you look this up, you'll find out what's important and what, um, what is the groundwork and, and what is your school board's mission statement and why, what they're focusing on? Do they focus, do they have equity in your strategic plan? Are they talking about, um, you know, making every kid feel safe and heard? Um, and sign up for webinars on this kind of topic. There are a lot of uh, different webinars and people talking about uh, information, disinformation at school boards, equity, and find out, um, you know, you can see different webinars and, and how that's being approached. Uh, share is the next part. So once you know what your school board, how they look and how it's made up and, and what they're focusing on, you can start to connect with other people. Really um, building alliances and coalition building is, is absolutely critical in order to make sure your voice is amplified and kids are being protected in their schools. Um, so recognize the groups that are showing up to school board meetings. Uh, you can tell if they're organized, if they're with particular organizations, either they may have certain shirts or after a while you're going to get to know them. I know who shows up to my school board meetings. I've been going a very long time. Um, and they may be talking about it in different social networks as well. Um, network with after meetings with like-minded individuals and groups, and you'll find out those people based on either their public comments, who's speaking, how they're reacting to what's going on in the, um, in the, in the agenda. Um, you can, in my case, I join local progressive groups, um, school board specific or community in order to help promote equity. Again, raising up every kid does not harm a single white kid. It's, it's, it's just makes it um, better for everybody. It helps all kids understand what different kids are going through with different backgrounds. And it helps those kids that are marginalized to feel like they're heard and that they're safe. Those groups um, tend to have higher rates of incarceration, they tend to have higher suicide rates. There is absolutely no reason to allow that to happen. Every kid needs to feel safe and heard in their school. Um, look for Facebook groups for these groups and specifically for school districts. Um, a lot of these groups are becoming private. So you would want, you know, so you probably have to get into those networks via somebody that you know. Um, but again, you can certainly search on them. There's a lot of community groups on Facebook and you can see what the conversation is going on in those groups as well, whether, uh, you know, how which side you're aligned with, and you can hear about, um, you know, concerns going on in your school district. But again, I, I do invite you to actually follow those, those meetings yourself so that you're not hearing it secondhand. Um, share, collaborate, and network. Again, um, it's all about coalition building and following up, finding out who's saying things that are, are maybe of concern, that are um, dangerous, or that are, you know, against safety, 
for community members, uh, school board members, teachers, or students. There's no room for that. Um, our teachers are going through a lot. They have been for the last several years. So um, I show up to support our teachers, our school board, and certainly our students. Um, you can find teachers, medical professionals, mental health professionals, and lawyers to be partners to speak at school board meetings. There are often people who might be interviewed if there's a newspaper there. And create groups to attend school board meetings. You can wear similar colors. You can clap during the public comments with things you agree with, or you can carry signs um, such as hashtag honesty and education. Um, so as Jim said, a lot of these things that, that you'll see, um, even these hashtags, they're not all that they seem. So always do some research before you start using them because um, while it might be, they might have a hashtag truth in education, they are really not promoting that. Um, and find allies at school board meetings. Again, um, if you can't go to every school board meeting, if, see if you can go to a few, see if you can trade off so that people, when, when there's some really important critical issue coming up, um, you're prepared for that. School boards mostly will put their agendas, um, and I've randomly checked a lot of school board meetings. Um, if you put in your school board, your district, maybe your town and school board meeting, you're going to find out when those meetings are, um, and you're going to be able to see the agenda and everything that's on there and all the things that they're going to cover. Um, things like online petitions are also use, useful for, you know, sort of promoting certain issues or providing support as well. And then being there is really um, really the most important thing, I think, is actually showing up in one form or another for your, basically for your students, for the community, for your teachers, and even for your school board. Um, you can contact the school board by email if you just do a quick search, you know, D211, D30, Board of Education, you're gonna be able to get a link. So you can email them, however you're feeling, however, whatever your thoughts are on, um, you know, and there's a lot of different things going on at school board. Not, it, you know, it's related to budget, it's related to safety, it's related to, um, you know, as we see school boards are, are uh, kids are being killed left and right in our schools. Um, you can email your school board with your concerns, even curriculum concerns. Be short and professional, don't attack your school board members. These are almost in every case, these are volunteer positions. These people do not deserve to be attacked. No matter where they stand, they do not deserve, um, you know, attack, you know, personal attacks on them. Uh, attend your school board meetings. When you find out when they are, um, try and make an effort to show up. They, they can be twice a month, they can be every week. Uh, a lot of them tend to be once a month. If you can attend even once a month, um, it's really important so you are educated with what's going on. And again, you're not getting secondhand knowledge if you're the one who's attending either in person uh, via video or, um, you know, or, or, or checking a live stream or an after the fact video. Um, you can sign up to speak and show support that way. Um, when you do Google your Board of Education, quite often the agenda is actually online. You can click on that agenda, you'll see exactly what they're gonna cover. Um, you'll see what time the public comments are going to be uh, placed in the agenda, if you have three to five minutes. And you'll also see the rest of the topics that are in the agenda. There's gonna have, if they have presentations, they'll often have the entire presentation in there. So you can see what they're gonna talk about ahead, ahead of time. So you know what is important to your district, your community, and your school board. Uh, you can sign witness slips, finding out about, um, you know, things that are actually in legislation, and you can support those. That's a very important part of the, uh, part of the process. Um, if your school board, is, or if your school district has focus groups or workshops or principal parent events, those are generally very poorly attended. And um, that, that always shocks me. Uh, but that's your chance to touch base with your school district directly and let them know what's important. Um, have a voice in that district. You do not have to be a parent for most of those focus groups and workshops. Um, if they perhaps they have a big referendum coming up, um, find out what, what they're covering. That's really important. You're part of the community. You can write letters to the editor um, stating about, you know, and, and in some cases it may just be saying that I, I want to support the teachers for all the hard work that they're doing. Um, we're asking them to do a lot, particularly in these last couple of years. There's a lot of mental health issues with our students. This was before the pandemic, and it is much worse now. So, um, you know, support your teachers as, 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 in any way that you can. Uh, consider running for office. Um, of next elections are going to be next year. Um, it's absolutely critical. Uh, again, these are volunteer positions, um, and it's important that we have people running for office that I want to support their community, their teachers, and absolutely the students. 
Um, in my case, it's finding progressive people to run for office because those are the people that I found that are most willing to really support equity programs, LGBTQ youth, um, those marginalized students that are really at risk. Um, you can submit FOIA requests, that's Freedom of Information Act requests, and we also have a whole um, presentation that we do on FOIA requests. You can also find out who else is submitting FOIA requests. Those are often literally in the agenda online, and you can find out there are people who are submitting requests that will ask for every email, every phone call, every text, actually every single thing to, between the, uh, the administrators and the school board for maybe years six months, two years, I've seen them for three years. Uh, that is what we would call a bad faith request. It is really being done to intimidate school boards and uh, administrators. And also basically will just literally waste the resources of your district. Some of them are, have just bankrupt, bankrupted a, a, a district. Um, be a good troll. You can go into groups that you don't agree with and see what they're talking about and understand what they're saying. Find out if they're, if they're planning something that's um, dangerous or find out if they're if they're spreading this information and absolutely absolutely vote in every election um, school board elections are awfully are, are usually in um, off cycle elections and they are going to be decided by a relatively small percentage of the community uh, messaging uh, messaging is very important again um, as someone who cares about all kids, be inclusive. We should want an honest and accurate education for our children and all children benefit from our equity program. Do not, does not harm anybody. Um, that is something that is good for all students and all, the entire community. Reclaim freedom and choice. Again, we want freedom to pursue honest and accurate education. I think that that's something very difficult to argue with. Teaching about the Holocaust, teaching about slavery, teaching about um, you know Juneteenth and uh, the Tulsa Race Massacre, which I am sh ashamed to say that was not taught in my school. Um, say things you're a for. Uh, repeat your message. Use an active voice and don't amplify the opposition. We don't talk about CRT in elementary schools and junior highs and high schools because it's simply not taught. Call out lies and focus on the kids. This is really about them. History and sex ed is taught based on age appropriate information. There is a sex ed bill in, um, or a, a, a wellness bill that was passed last year in Illinois and it will take effect this year. And it says that if school districts are teaching sex ed, and wellness, they have to have a minimum standard. It is not telling them what's in the curriculum. It is not giving specific books or specific topics. It is just a minimum standard for what they're gonna teach and it has to be age appropriate. Here's just a, a screen of messaging resources, uh, just different things. Again, messaging is very important. Um, and uh, this is some great information, learn from history in particular. Uh, support our schools and honesty and education are, are just really important uh, things to follow up on. Some public comment samples. Um, again, children deserve an honest education about race and racism in this country. Attempts to squash these conversations are attacks on a multiracial democracy, justice, and community. And I, I believe that's very difficult to argue with. I mean, it's we, if you're arguing against honest, accurate education, I would argue that that's that's um, not what public education should be about. Um, again, we cannot allow public officials to dumb down public school curricula because they're not comfortable with the truth of this country's past and present. Um, and then just uh, just uh, here again, our United States diversity is a strength. Um, and then this one, no matter our color, background, or zip code, we want our children to have an education that imparts honesty about who we are, integrity, and how we treat others, and courage to do what's right. It's about treating um, all our students and our staff and our teachers with honesty, integrity, and respect. Uh, letters to the editor, this is uh, just some, some tips on creating a good letter to the editor, making it not emotional and factual. And then running for office, some tips on running for office and how important it is that we find people. If you are not willing to run, finding somebody else who you think would be a great school board member. Again, it should not be about a Democrat or Republican. I actually have, have supported um, a Republican. I am, I am a progressive, but I support a Republican because um, she's an old school Republican, but it's really about what she's doing for our school district. And that is really was the most important thing for me. Um, book ban actions. Again, book bans, uh, book bans are happening across this country. 
A group called Red Wine and Blue is actually tracking that. It's, it's appalling. Um, and the vast majority of Americans do not support book bans. And I would say that that's actually not just literal book bans, but it's actually curriculum banning and trying to not discuss things about race, racial equity or LGBTQ students as well. Um, so they do some tracking there. And um, finally, it's not, you know, it's not up to just a few of us who are tracking this information and who have been going to school boards. We are all important to make sure that we are supporting our public education and making it successful and making every single kid successful. A, a loss of one kid is a loss to our entire society, our community. Thank you. Hey, Joyce, let me get, I just want to add one thing. Um, so Joyce mentioned being a good troller. Joyce has been able to establish a great network in her school district of, I don't know, 15, 25 people. One of them found out that the Republican committee chairman for the township was coordinating with the Proud Boys to show up at a school board meeting. We found out about it. Joyce activated the network. And we showed up at that school board meeting to the point where I think maybe one of them spoke. So, so we actually turned the table on them. And we, because so many of us showed up, we intimidated the Proud Boys. Think about that. We intimidated the Proud Boys because they did not speak. And that, and that makes it very dangerous for everybody. And there's no, again, no room for that kind of intimidation and threat. Um, they were coming from outside of our district. They weren't even in our district. And that's simply accept, not acceptable. So I want to thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate for letting it. Letting us speak. Know a, I did not know a couple of them, so my apologies again. I tried to put them as soon as I could. Uh, I thank you for putting up with it and sticking around, Jim and Joyce. Uh, what it is now time for is our question period, and anybody who's got a question will uh, let me know either via chat or, or via you know just raising your hand in the Zoom thing. Um, what I'd like to know is uh, as 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 a guy who was raised in the seventies, okay. And as a guy who was, uh, you know, taught that a boy was a boy and a girl was a girl, where does all this uh, stuff about the LGBTQ come from? I mean, I'm not trying to put the movement down. I just can't quite understand it myself. I'm 60 years old and, you know, I, I've heard about this stuff before. And, you know, I do go to a Christian church and everything, but I'm just not sure what, what the big to do is. And is it really that that big a deal in, in this in this uh, part of the stuff. Yeah, um, I, I recently um, did some research and 25% of LGBTQ youth consider suicide in high school. That is four times what heterosexual students consider. That is absolutely tragic. Um, I also grew up in the 70s. LGBTQ youth have always been there. That's not new. It's just that they were made to feel ashamed or marginalized. And a lot of them probably did end up killing themselves. And, and that, to me, is absolutely tragic. What? And, exactly. and, 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 and Tim, I mean, they're, 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 they're kids. I, and, I you know, know the, 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 the thinking has been that, and, and this is one of the reasons that the people are trying to do book banning. Oh, if, if you read a book about LGBTQ, you're going to become queer. Okay. That's not true. Okay. So if I read a book about a murder mystery, am I going to become a murderer? I don't think so. So that, that, that's some of the thinking that, that's behind this is, um, you know, and the, 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 it's been proven more and more that this is just the, the orientation that these kids have. It's not a choice for these kids. Uh, so, but they're kids. And as we said, you know, we need to be inclusive. Okay, no, no, I, I agree. I'm just, I just. Yeah. My, my, my honest questioning is what exactly is an LGBTQ, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to be a jackass, but, you know, maybe me being 60 years old and being raised a certain way. I mean, I do remember when the gay movement first started, they started coming out around 76 and 77. Is there yeah. a question? 
I'm going to finish yeah. here in a second. Let's uh, ask a I, question. I'll just, I'll just say thank you very much for at least uh, letting me know a little bit more about it. Charlie, you're next. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I began my uh, life as a school librarian and later served as a public librarian. And you kind of hit on it. But to what extent is this book ban? Are they engaged in book banning? Um, and have you guys been in contact with the uh, American Library Association Unit on Intellectual Freedom? We haven't been in contact with them. Joyce, maybe you have, but I haven't. But I mean, we, we've, done, we've gotten information from their website about what's going on. And the other thing, it's not just physical book banning. A lot of libraries, uh, high school libraries, public libraries, have online sites where you can download a book for your computer or your Kindle or whatever. Well, guess what? There are people that are saying, well, because all these books are available on that online thing. Um, we, we, and, and there are libraries that have canceled their contracts with those online books without, without telling anybody about it. All of a sudden, it's gone. Yeah, and I'm sharing a screen here now. This is the um, red, white, and blue book banning. And this is just what has been reported to them. These are book bans across the country where there have been attempted book bans or successful book bans. And this, it, this is driven pretty horrifying because by and large, Americans do not favor book bans. Um, and, and this is, this is uh, you can check your own state and see where it is. And you can see specifically what is going on. Again, this is just what's being reported on the site. And just again, another reason that you have to pay attention to these elections. Um, Niles Library last last year in the uh, municipal election that was in April, only eight percent of the people in Niles actually voted in that election. And what happened is a lot of these conservatives got elected to the, the library board. And after they were installed, they cut the budget, they fired people, they reduced the hours, they, um, gosh, what else did they, oh, they cut programs. And all of a sudden the people in Lyles are going, hey, wait a minute, we like the library, what's going on? The answer is you have to vote, pay attention, you have to vote. When I was out canvassing today, one of the guys who answered the door, I asked him if he voted and he said, oh, I'm not political, I generally don't. And I, what I said is, if you don't if you don't vote, don't complain about the government you get. And he, he was like, oh yeah, I guess that's right. So again, what we're trying to do is raise awareness just at school board, library board levels, but it's it's across the board. You have to pay attention, you have to vote. Okay, is that the end of your question, Charlie? Or is there any yes, more? Yes, thank you. All right, Charlie. Dan and Ilana, go ahead. I have a, I have a question. Uh, is this happening mostly in <clears throat> uh, communities in the suburbs or is it large cities like Chicago, Denver, LA, New York, Boston, or is it just suburbs like Niles, uh, Morton Grove, Skokie? That's one question. It, it, it's happening everywhere, not, not just, uh, I can't comment about the city of Chicago because um, that's such a different, right now it's an appointed school board. So, I mean, it, you know, and he, here's the thing you got to consider, be careful what you wish for. I know people want an elected school board in Chicago. Be careful what you wish for. Right. Because, you know, it, it could all turn on you just like it did at the Niles Library. Right, and Jim and I have spoken with um, people who, um, who are very well aware of what's going on in, in the school districts in Chicago, and, and they are having a lot of the similar issues. And, they, and we've done a lot of uh, projects with those groups as well. I, I know somebody, I know somebody at the Niles the Library, I think they did the technical services. Did they get rid of the technical services person? You know? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know any details. I, I just know that the, just the, those generalities that I just okay. outlined. All right, I have a question. Uh, book bannings, 
Has anybody started book burnings like in Germany in the 1930s? Oh, uh, have you heard of book burning so far? Well, the interesting thing is kids are really learning online. So almost everything, is, they're not getting a lot of physical books now. So yeah, probably not so much there, but I, I have heard um, people talk about that um, and, you know, on, on, you know, very conservative circles, but generally speaking, yeah, a lot of stuff's electronic. So it's yeah, really that, just trying to get it out of their hands. There was a legislator and I can't remember what state it was, but because uh, they were pulling books off the shelf and his comment was, well, what do we do with these books? Let's burn them. Right. Okay. And then one more question. The Mouse by Art uh, Spiegelman. Yeah. Why would Mouse be banned? I don't understand. Because it talks it, it, about the Holocaust, honestly. That's, yeah. That's why. And, and it, 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 if, if you read it, I mean, it was supposed to be because there was swearing in there. I think the word I, damn was think, used once. Well, I think it was only a, a point of order. I think it was... I think it was only by banned uh, for certain certain age groups. They thought it was inappropriate for for the younger children. I think it's still around and being taught in the in the upper classes. Well, yeah, I mean, but it's one of the books that they're trying to ban, just which means pull off the shelf. And you know, I've 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 read the book. Um, you know, there's something about uh, nudity. These are mice. The people are portrayed as mice. Cartoon it's mice. A, yeah, it, it's a mouse without clothes on. <laughs> and if it's you've not that, seen the Holocaust um, pictures of actual real people, and I have when I was in high school, and it, it was it, it seared in my mind. And you do see that coming, you know, being sent to those to, to the showers, and that's what uh, that's the reality of what happened. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if we really need to be showing that to. To you know, little kids. But, Again, um, it's age appropriate. They're yeah, they're sharing they're right. that with age appropriate for sure. Okay. okay. Um, Bob, I guess you're next for the question. So go ahead, please. Yeah. Um, so just so uh, just to uh, bring everybody around on this a little bit, the all the school board stuff uh, really did really came out of the Loudoun County, Virginia uh, action. Uh, what a year or so ago, wasn't it? When uh, and then that all start because a a uh, a, a, a trans uh, boy pretending to be a girl raped raped a girl or something, and uh, then that's what started the whole. Was wasn't that really the catalyst of this whole shebang and in, in, uh, those parents going to school boards and protesting? I I, I can't answer, but Loudoun County has been an epicenter for a lot of the CRT. Um, that, that one slide that I showed with the uh, education, not indoctrination, uh, picture of people, that was Loudoun County. And there was, yeah. and actually a few years ago, there was also uh, in Texas, I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly where it was, South, South Park maybe, uh, Texas. This was actually one of the really early uh, areas where they were starting a, an equity program. And a lot of the white parents, it was, primarily a white area, they were very angry and they started smearing a lot of the black families and they ended up killing that program. Yeah, and also the other, uh, you know, besides the Loudoun County thing with the with the trans student raping the female, um, you know, a lot of this stuff that's been going on in the public schools have been flying under the radar until, until the COVID lockdowns and they started, you know, now parents are watching their kids you know, on these uh, Zoom, you know, Zoom classroom events, and seeing what was really going on, and that's what uh, you know has got everybody all all stirred up. And uh, and frankly, I'm right there with with the parents. I I'm with them 100. percent Yeah, Bob, I, I I've been to some. Uh, so with my, uh, my local school district, um, I was asked to be. We're doing a strategic plan, and I was asked to participate. And one of the first meetings, parents were complaining that they wanted to know every day what their students' assignments were. They wanted to be able to see their notes. They wanted to be able to know, know all, all those things. Why did it take a pandemic for parents to finally get interested in what their kids were doing? Number one. Number two, they want to supervise their, they want to be helicopter parents. They also want to prepare their kids to go to college. Well, they won't be there 
you know, monitor what the kids are doing when, when they're at college. So how are these kids going to learn to be independent and actually get an education because they want the education instead of their parents being a helicopter parent and, and, and you know, supervising everything. So it's, it's, it's a little concerning. I mean, I, I understand parents should be involved. There's no doubt about it. Parents should know what's going on. But why did it take a pandemic for people to finally say, I want to know what the kids are learning at school. They've always been able to go and find out what's going on. The curriculum's never been secret. You can go talk to your the kids, parents, or teachers every, anytime you want. Set up an appointment, make a phone call. And curriculums are, and books used are usually public information already. Um, yeah. Every parent obviously is, that's why we pay our school administrators, our district administrators, they hire professional people to review curriculum and actual books. And yes, that stuff is, is not a secret. Hopefully you're talking to your kid if you're that concerned. Hopefully you're finding out what your kid is learning. And you can almost always opt out of something that you're not comfortable with. Right. So now, do you support, uh, uh, you know, when uh, teachers, uh, you know, uh, telling, you know, telling kids, like affirming that kids are transgender and letting them be a different sex in school behind their parents' back and let them change into opposite gender clothing and things like that, keeping, keeping that a secret from the parents? Do you favor that stuff? I would behavior? say if your child is that, uh, is that um, afraid of their parents' reaction, I, I would say that's pretty terrifying. I, I would say for that kid, they should, hopefully they're going to feel supported wherever they are, whether that's in school or they find somebody. Um, and that's part of the reason of why we want to have diversity in our mental health professionals, our teachers, and our support staff at schools. And so those kids feel like they have someone they can talk to. No, I don't, I don't want to, I don't think it's up to a teacher to, to try and out a kid purposely or to shame them in any way. Okay, uh, Dan Bader, would you, uh, you're up for the next question. Unmute, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got it, you got it. Thank you. Okay, um, well, I didn't hear, I've arrived here late. I apologize for that. And uh, so I missed uh, some of the substance, but I do have kind of two quick questions. Uh, I have not read a book on critical race theory I have one of them in my Kindle library that I'm going to get to, uh, but I have not read anything uh, actually written by proponents of critical race theory. But one, one of the uh, things that you see all the time uh, against the critical race theory curriculum, including the books that are, I guess, kind of the heart of what it is, is that it somehow uh, directly or indirectly proposes that the Caucasian race is inherently evil based on all sorts of things that have gone on in the past. And, and I, so, so I'm wondering, uh, is that the case? And then I have one other quick little question if I could. Okay, Dan, th that, that is the unfortunate part of what is happening. That's the disinformation that you're hearing. Okay. That, that, and and uh, on the, at, at the other, other side of that is critical race theory is a postgraduate course. It is not being taught in any public school that we know of anywhere in, in the United States. So, you know, so be careful when, when you want to understand critical race theory and what's being taught, because it's not being taught. No, and, and I do understand that it originally came out of a law school curriculum. Yes. And, that they, you know, and that's a little bit above the primary grades. But that doesn't mean that there cannot be things that are derived from that law school level theory that might be there. Anyway, that's out there. And, and I don't really see that being debated or argued in a meaningful way in the media. But let, let me go to the second uh, can I question. Just, can I just respond to? There's sure. a Mary McMurrow, um, a senator in, in Minnesota. She had an incredibly powerful speech. She was being attacked from her opponents 
um, during the, you know, while she's running for office. Um, part of her speech says, no child alive today is responsible for slavery. No one in this room is responsible for slavery. But each and every single one of us bears responsibility for writing the next chapter of history. Each and every single one of us decides what happens next and how we respond to history and the world around it. We are not responsible for the past. Um, so again, it, clearly nobody alive is responsible for slavery, but teaching about it well, shouldn't make you feel guilty. But if you want to ignore it, I would say I would argue you should you should you should take responsibility and feel bad about that. Yeah, and and I would just be, before I just go on to this next question, I would just say that uh, you know slavery. Uh, in a historical sense, was all over the world. I mean, in a, you know, you could have black on black slavery. You know, I, I mean, and and I think that if you just take the American experience with slavery, which you know uh, came with a conquering okay. of of and, uh, and, uh, so. But anyway, let let me move to this second question, which um, so in terms of uh, the. LGBTQ uh, issue. So uh, until 1974 in the United States, the American Psychiatric Association still considered homosexuality and other sexual uh, uh, fetishes, etc., to be a mental illness. Now in 1974, that was changed. And I think most of us know that in the 60s and the 70s, tremendous progress was made in terms of all identities, whether it was uh, black, whether it was women, uh, whether it was LGBTQ, et cetera. Tremendous progress. I mean, all you have to do is look around in the business world, in the political world, in the media world, uh, you can just see the difference in terms of the distribution of power, or maybe that's equity, but it's there. It's there. And, and, but here's the thing, going back to the school curriculum and these children. Now, I don't know what people assume, you know, what, what is the age when somebody's uh, erotic imprint those things that they find sexually very exciting, at what point uh, do people think that that erotic imprint has actually been formed? And how does that even get formed? Now, you know, and I, and I differentiate that from say the gender imprint, which is something really a little different. But if you are going and you are exposing children who are five, six, seven, uh, you know, maybe up to about eight, with a lot of material which could be uh, uh, put being put into uh, their erotic imprint, because what once that happens, there a question. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a question. Here's the question. Uh, the question is given what I've just said, okay, about, about the erotic imprint for these young kids. We're not talking about 11, 12, 13, or teenagers. So uh, do you think it's appropriate if it's happening, and you can tell me it's not happening, that these younger children are being exposed to things uh, which they might incorporate into their imprint and they may not be happy about down the road that they've actually incorporated that because it's very uh, uh, fluid and, and many, many things can be put into it. So I, I just, uh, that's the question. What, what is your thoughts about what I just said? I think if you look at kids hearing about LGBTQ rights now, they're not all gay, they're not all transgender, they're not bisexual. And I, I, I you know, if, if they hear, it's, you know, one of the things, and this is not the same clearly, but we teach um, a program in our schools called Signs of Suicide. And they say talking about suicide does not make people want to commit suicide. I also don't believe talking about LGBTQ rights or black rights makes people necessarily want to become that. It may, may help them to recognize something in themselves or their peers so that they aren't judging their peers. And I say, 
I have no problem with that. Yeah. It's it's going to be age appropriate usually, yes. Well, what, and Jason, what, and, 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 and I think I think like like, like you said that uh, that ed education bill eight eight one eight is age appropriate. Right. And I think I think we have to uh, say there are people who know more than we do, um, who make those decisions, and I think we have to trust them. Um, and 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 you know, and, and if you don't dig into it and, 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 and speak up about why you think that's, that age appropriate bill is, is not right. Okay. Being LGBTQ, I, I would argue there's nothing wrong with it. I don't, I mean, right. probably most of us know somebody, a relative, a friend, a family member, and I'm fine well, with, with kids learning about that. Yeah, just one final okay. little comment and then and I'll shut up. I, I will definitely shut up. Uh, here, here's, here's one thing, you know, uh, a lot of you may remember that back in the, maybe some of you will remember back in the late 1980s and into the 90s, there was uh, a big, you know, almost became kind of a, a huge media celebrity type thing where uh, multiple personality disorder or dissociative identity disorder was all over the place with people having, you know, repressed memories coming up of you know satanic abuse and sexual abuse when they were very young and and of course what was going on and this has been fairly well established that's why you don't hear about it anymore was that people were very very suggestible to the inputs from the therapists at that time who were doing that kind of work okay and, and i uh, think you have to realize that for the young children and, and, all right what we what we are doing now is this Got it. questions that the numbers, okay, okay i'm done thank, the, the, thank the, you very much the thank thing you is, for tolerating me again it's okay you're new to the college okay we do have a rebuttal at, at at rebuttal time afterwards and we got three people look asking questions now i have ellen then i have charlie and then i have dan dan and, and Ilana. daniel bader i really appreciate your contrib contributions but again we are trying to keep the format going properly. Ellen, you're next, so go ahead. Unmute, Ellen. Okay, hi, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, thank you very much for your talk. I thought it was excellent. Um, I, I And I have to say, Dan, I, I really wish we had a more, if we could have questions and comments kind of at the same, but, um, but I, I had been, in Northwest Organizing for Action. And uh, I, I'm glad to hear you all talking. Um, it's, you know, I guess the smallest question is, you know, is it kind of a, um, I know when I was in Organizing for Action, we had uh, broke up into issue groups. And um, so I don't know if y'all are focused on education or, which is an interesting one. Um, I. Uh, so here, let me see, what is the question is, I, I guess it's kind of a, um, a, an experience I have as a teacher. Uh, I don't know if you, it would be interesting. You talked about being a strategic person. It would be interesting to have a curriculum. I have a master's in education and philosophy of education, you know, a strategy of uh, this whole issue because for teacher education, because uh, when I was a teacher in the 80s, that people, the right, parents right, were all right. over us right. about Can accountability. So I'm saying this isn't a new issue as far as I'm concerned. It is a culture war that's kind of stirred up and it pushes poor teachers out of teaching. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's just really wild the way culture wars have you ever looked into any of this, how how culture wars were created by, you know, in the early 90s? For, I love what you said about political purposes. And uh, and it it is crazy that it seems to always come from the right-wing extremist Ku Klux Klan yeah, side of yeah. the thing. And, and, and media yeah, is another yeah, part of that. Yeah, well, One question. Yeah. So, so there, Ellen, a, a, a lot of this stuff, and again, what we're trying to do is Joyce and I have been doing this presentation for 10 months. We tried to take 10 months of information and squeeze it into one hour. Um, one of the things that we talked about at our last presentation was 
a lot of the stuff is actually old stuff being restarted. Um, it, so, you know, how, how did the culture wars get started? They've been going on. They, they happen and then they go away and then they get restarted. So now you asked about uh, OFA. Joyce and I are actually doing this with um, uh, Illinois Indivisible, Indivisible Illinois, which OFA is now a part of, and uh, the Social Justice Alliance that's part of that Indivisible organization. So we're both members of OFA, but we're doing this in association with the Illinois uh, Indivisible Illinois Social Justice Alliance. And why social justice and alliance? Because we started with critical race theory. Hey, Tim, my <laughs> turn. And I think in, in high school, they tend to talk about it in terms of equity and the lower grades. I think they usually talk about social emotional learning, which is more, um, more about social awareness, relationship skills, but there is a culture and a, and a sort of an equity piece to that as well. Okay. Right. Here's another follow up. All right. I'd like could. to ask a question. Uh, El Charlie, uh, let Ellen go. You've already been gone. No, no, she's Ellen. had a question. Ellen's she's got a, a follow up. No, go ahead, Ellen. no. Max, Charlie, one. shut. Charlie. You don't get two questions, Tim. Yeah, uh, they're never been a college. We've had five. You're, you're on your second question, Charlie. What? Go ahead. Blow hard. You know, put it out there, Mr. Control Freak. All right, Charlie, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. No, so I, I know how to ask a question. I'm a secretary of the Chicago Greens. Has there been much effort to counter one of the measures of our success has been influencing young people regarding uh, climate, global warming? Are this, is, is climate change been a target of these uh, groups and to any extent? Uh, OFA does have a climate group that, uh, you know, I participate in and Joyce does, but uh, we have somebody else that leads that group. As far as in education, um, we've not heard them talking about that as much, honestly, um, in, the, in the circles that we've seen. Um, you know, given that that is a, a right wing pushback, I, I don't know, but um, that's clearly important to our youth and it should be talked about in schools, but uh, specifically I've not seen these groups talking and pushing back on climate change discussions. I mean, that seems to be a specifically a Republican issue as opposed to these uh, at the school level. But kids are clearly concerned about it, and they should be. Yeah, one of the slides that I showed from that Hillsdale said that they were climate deniers, and they are. Yeah, I saw that. That that you know that that's 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 a. It's a very small Christian college, and you know that's the same same organization that says Putin is a hero. So, you know, put those together and th think about how out of place their uh, dialogue is. Yeah, and one of the talking points a lot of these um, groups talk about is, no, let's just get back to reading, writing, and the basics. That clearly does not include things like climate science, although that is being, I see that taught in my kids' test textbooks and stuff. I mean, it's clearly fact, but um, I, I, I would argue that that is probably, yeah, based on what uh, that, you know, but Jim found if that's something else they don't want to be talking about. Okay, um, who's who's next? I I don't. I, there was another person. Uh, okay, now there was somebody else up next. I don't know who. Is it other people who have questions? I think it was Dan and Elena. Okay, uh, Dan, did you have a question? All right, Dan, go ahead. Yeah, is Winnie the Pooh? You know if Winnie the Pooh was being banned anywhere? <laughs> the book, the Wicked. I uh, know. No, but they, they they did they did try to ban Big Bird. Big Bird. Big Bird. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, yep. Does go the, ahead, Ellen. Yeah. Does the um, teachers? National Education Association, or I mean, are there any ways of stopping the communities from doing this kind of book burning, uh, you know, harassment of teachers and the curriculum? I mean, I, I, you would think that if we had stronger universities teaching colleges, uh, you know, there could be some kind of 
hold back on that, but I, I know it's different in Georgia and Illinois, uh, you know, the, um, I guess, legal policy protections for schools and yeah. teachers. We would appreciate if the teachers would talk at the school board meetings, but because of the climate at the school board meetings, I don't think the teachers want to want to show up and say a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I really? just dropped a link for the NEA, um, you know, honesty and education. They have some really important information. They have a great video on there. Teachers are afraid because they are being attacked. They're being attacked for what they say. And um, it, retired teachers are more likely to speak up. Um, the teachers union, you can, you know, try and get support from them and engage where they're at. Um, but yeah, they're understandably afraid and they're retiring like crazy, you know, yeah, because and, they're being attacked. Who wants to teach when everything you say is going to be, you know, used to to attack you? I, I, I talked about that one mm -hmm. group that's taking uh, names for uh, of teachers that Turning Point USA has something they call the professor watch list. If you don't like what your professor is talking about, you can turn them in to this professor watch list. Oh. And they also have wow. a, a school board watch list, which Chicago school district, sh the city of Chicago is on the watch list. Sh Schomburg school district is on the watch list. There's no, there's, there's no mediation as to what goes on the watch list. If somebody just said, if I say, I don't like what Barrington is talking about, I can, I can put them on the, on the watch list. This is ridiculous. This mm. is the 50s McCarthy. Right. And I've seen FOIA it requests, requests for, for, from a teacher, teacher's name in the FOIA request. The class is, I think, diversity in America. He's being called out in a FOIA request. I suspect they're going to use that against him. Notice, pay attention to in your school districts, what those FOIA requests, what their people are requesting and who's requesting them. You'll yeah, see those another, in the agenda. Um, yeah, and another reason you want to do that is some of those people will probably try to run for your school board next April. And you wanna know some history on these people. So if they do run, you can call them on it. Cause that's a level that's hard to find information about people. And that is gonna give you more information about who these people are. That's Dead's resource again. So if you go to the agenda um, and, and Jim, I think you had some specific resources, but also if you go to the agenda in your school districts, you can look up the FOIA request in, in the agenda and see who's requesting those things and what they are requesting. If you find things, um, again, you know, um, I had a, an email school board disinformation at gmail.com. Um, please send that, you know, to Jim and I, and we'll, you know, it's, it's good for us to try and keep track of this information at, uh, at a broader level. Yeah, it, it may not be easy to find Joyce's a sleuth. I could not, I could not find it on my school board site. I think Joyce took about two or three minutes and sent me an email and said, here, go look here. <laughs> it's very interesting. It's good, yeah. You can go back several months too and see if these people have been doing it for months and months and, and just, you know, maybe they're in your district, maybe not, you know where they're from and you can see there are national groups doing the same thing and you can see the same thing. Union and, busting and, groups. And, and, and you will see that there are legitimate FOIA requests as you go right. through that. For example, uh, the school district sends a bid out for a uh, a repair of the parking lot. The contractor that didn't get the bid wants to know why. So he files a FOIA request because he wants to know where did I go wrong? That's legitimate. Okay. But when they, when they send these things in, like Joyce said, um, send me every email, every text message, every, every phone communication, every note from, from the superintendent to the school board to, uh, you know, to all the teachers, FOIA requests in Illinois, they have five days to gather all that information or they can be fined. And mm. once they get, gather all that information, it has to be reviewed by legal because it has to be redacted. They can't send out any information that might have a student's name in it. They can't send out personal information. So, so but they have to get it done in five days. And there's something called voluminous requests where they can say you need to restate your request, but I don't know if every school board is even aware of that. Because there have yeah. been school boards that have gone broke answering FOIA requests. These these ridiculously large. And I would I don't care who you are, if you're just fishing for information, I don't think that that's appropriate use of district resources. 
Yeah, I, I went to our, my, my school uh, district about uh, six or eight weeks ago and said, D can you tell me what the cost to the district is to answer all these FOIA requests? They were not keeping track of the cost. They are now. So I'm not going to follow up until next August or September because right now it's kind of quiet. What Joyce and I are seeing at school board meetings is it, they're no, no longer raucous. We expect it to start again in the July, August timeframe which is when it got raucous last year. Could, could you get like FOIA requests? I think it's my like, turn, Ellen. Okay. Well, uh, go ahead, Charlie. Thank you. Um, I even forgot my question. <laughs> then, then we'll let Ellen go then, Charlie. If no, Ellen uh, a question. That All happened, right. Charlie, you gotta write it down. All right, Ellen, go ahead, then we'll let Charlie go. Yeah. Ellen, go okay, could you do a FOIA request of like the Tea Party or whoever is organizing these FOIA requests? You know, um, that would be interesting. I've, I've heard, you know, I do involved with criminal justice reform and they say, you know, if you wanna get an innocent person free from prison, you should um, FOIA. You know, I mean, so it, it is a valuable tool, but, you know, it sounds like with so many things, the, the extreme right wing Tea Party types are, um, are using these with the wrong intention. Yeah, right, and they're meant for transparency. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, they're meant for transparency and, and you know, I mean, government agencies and, and that sort of thing. So if you're making a request to the school district, you're asking them something very specific about what they have within their realm. So, um, you know, and mm -hmm. they can turn back and say, oh, you can you can also make a fire request to a police department or village, um, but it's within their realm what they what do they have information on. And, and right. Ellen, I, I think to, to, to do what, what you're suggesting is you can actually do that yourself. Go, go, go to the yeah. school board, download all the FOIA requests, which is what I've done with my school district. Then you can go through them and see who, who is making repeated FOIA requests and what mm -hmm. are, are, they, are they similar? Are they all these you know, excessive requests? So and, and you can do that yourself. It, it's citizen I would, I would suggest you do it. Right, because right, it's text-based, but um, yeah, sometimes they'll even include the entire FOIA request. Sometimes you'll include who made the, you know, normally it's who made the request, where they're from, and what the request is. Um, but it, it, it is utterly fascinating, I, I can tell you that, to find out what people are asking about in your district. Uh, also, I don't know who's in noise in the background there. Um, does somebody have a radio on? Or yeah, it sounds like a radio or TV. It sounds like it's echo from this. So yeah, it, it is echo from this, but I think it might be somebody else's computer who's using it. All right, uh, Ellen, are you done with your uh, question? Um, I, I uh, guess I had another one. If nobody else has one, um, yeah, go I have next. a question. Charlie's got his question. Now, so go ahead. I think it's coming from your computer, Ellen. Not me. I think it's is it? I think I think it's Bob yeah. actually. Okay. Bob's, yeah, maybe okay, Bob. Uh, he keeps showing up um, as the picture. I think you're having an echo on your problem, Bob. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, all right. Well, anyway, well, uh, I'm okay. He muted himself, so I think we're going to be have it. But Bob, please feel free to join us when you're ready. Okay, Charlie, go ahead. Yes, uh, I've been a a member of the. People's Response Network to COVID-19 in Chicago, about two and a half years, weekly meetings. And uh, lately the focus has been on school policy. I'm surprised to see, are there actually parents who are, if I'm correct, objecting to students wearing masks as a precautionary measure? That's how it, that's all lot, oh, sorry. Th that's how this started up. They were objecting to kids wearing masks. And even now after um, there was a lawsuit in Illinois, so they no longer could require kids to wear masks. I still heard people in public comments um, 
making aspersions and nasty comments to kids wearing masks. I had a mask on today and during a, a parade and somebody in the Republican uh, contingent mocked me for wearing a mask. My choice, I should be able to wear a mask without being attacked. Kids being attacked for choosing to wear a mask, same thing. That's, I, I don't understand that. that that's, that's where when I said the word freedom, they want freedom. It's not what you think of freedom. They don't want to, they want to, their idea of freedom is they don't want to be told to do anything. You know, my body, my choice, except when it comes to things like, um, you know, reproductive rights. It's not my body, my choice anymore. They want to tell you what to do. So they want to just, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Joyce. I say they want to decide the curriculum, not just for their kid, but for everybody's kid. Not just their kid, everybody kid, everybody's kid. They want to decide the curriculum. But the, 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 the mask, like I said, the mask was, was something to get the parents riled up about. And just, just for an example, and I love to tell this story. One of the things that I heard at a school board meeting, and, and uh, these people, I think, forget that they're actually talking to educators. But this person comes up and she goes, and this is probably three or four months ago when we still had a mask mandate in Illinois. She says, we have a very low positivity in Illinois and we have a mask mandate. All the states around us don't have a mask mandate and they have a higher positivity. So because our positivity is so low, why do we have a mask mandate? Can you guys think about that? Why do you think yeah. that we have a, a lower positivity? It's because we have a mask mandate. Why do you think the other states have a higher positivity? Because they don't have a mask mandate. And she was trying to use that as a justification to withdraw the mask mandate in, in our school district. Obviously. Our school, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, that's it. In our school district, one of our school districts had a voluntarily, um, a volunteer vaccination clinic, not during school hours, for anybody in the community to show up. Our, that superintendent and the school board got hate mail for hosting a vaccination clinic. Voluntary, not forcing any kid to do it, not forcing any family member to do it. Um, and they got hate mail for doing that. Our group wants vaccination in being given in each school all day. It makes sense. Yeah. We did it with well, the flying know, flu. I guess um, I think it's interesting that it does seem. You know, it, I think the problem is the mandate. You know, I'm not vaccinated and I can't teach because I won't be vaccinated. I've got research saying it's bad for you. And it really, I got it and then it hurt my feelings and I got defensive. This idea that you can't work. I can't teach. I can't go to school because I'm not vaccinated. That's scary. It's driving well, people like me to Georgia. You know. But hopefully it seems to have blown over, but it's, it's, you know, I mean, I, the idea of the mandate is, is just crazy. And uh, I think a mask to defend yourself, you get vaccinated, you wear a mask. That's, you're right. But when they say you have to be mandated to, you have to be vaccinated to teach or work for the federal government. This is, I mean, you know, I don't go screaming about it at school boards, but I scream inside my skin and I, you know, it scares me that, that it's going to lead to vaccine passports. So I'm, I'm a liberal and everybody calls me a right winger for being like this. And I'm as left wing as you can be. I'm just well, saying, please let me, don't make me get that killer vaccine. You know, you want it. I hate to, and, and I speak up about it and have been thrown off the internet because I don't, I, I think it causes Alzheimer's and all sorts of problems. Yeah, Ellen, and, Ellen, Ellen, all that is disinformation. You're listening well, to the I wrong believe stuff. It. Wait I, a minute, you know, let, 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 me, let me finish. Let, let, me, let finish. me finish, please. There, there's hundreds of millions of vaccinations around the world. Different batches. Not, let me finish. There's please not one finish. case that's been attributed to Alzheimer's. Not one, not one. That's all disinformation. Right. Number two. Number two, the reason to get vaccinated is not just for yourself, it's for others. Yes, it is. It's, it's because you, if you get contracted, you can give it to somebody. I mean, my, my wife is a cancer survivor. As am I. 
She, yeah, she is terrified it's about going, going into places where people finish, are not please. vaccinated or, or not wearing masks. Oh. So you're doing it not for yourself, you're doing it for the community. Uh, well, that's your belief. All I know is I've it's not a belief. I it's a, my own it's a fact, Ellen. Ellen, and that's what we're talking about tonight is disinformation. But I you're not pushing mandates for vaccines. Would, or, is that what you believe, that everybody should have a vaccine? or they can't Just, just like the measles, mumps, polio, absolutely. Those are different. The no, it's MRNA not. Is a, it's it's a not fraud. different. Those it's are mandated. Those okay, are guys, mandated. Let's not, let's not go down this rabbit hole. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jim, I thank you very much. And Ellen, I know you got your views. We can uh, give full board to that when we get into our yeah. rebuttal period. Now, Daniel. You know what? Uh, Just one second. I'm in a uh, holistic uh, okay. alternative. Alana, no, can... no, wait, wait, wait. One second. One second. Please. Silencer. Silencer no, now. No, but, no, no. Chuck. Okay, she's muted. Daniel, you had a uh, question. Unmute, please. Unmute, Dan. Okay, and I'm unmute because you're supposed to be voluntarily vaccination. Okay, now, Daniel, you got a question. You got to unmute, okay? Uh, okay. Uh, it, it, actually, it was just a question about the process here, because it seems like uh, we've gone from questions to more of a general conversation, which I like, right. but I, that's what I wanted to know. Okay. Now, what's going to happen next is if, does anybody else have any questions? And I understand this. All right. What we're going to do now is I'm going to give everybody a certain specified amount of time. Who's got rebuttals tonight that wants to speak? I'm going to give everybody uh, five minutes each. So, Bob Matter, you got one. Who else? Hey, uh, Tim, I, I, I have a hard stop at eight o'clock. I, I, I have to do something with my wife. Okay, so uh, I, I'm, Bob, I'm going to have to go. We'll see you later. Thank our speakers. Let's thank our speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, I also have to leave. Thank you Good very much. Discussion. Good discussion. Leave because we have we are going till nine o'clock and if you'd like to stick around you get the last word thank you uh, i cannot wait till nine o'clock sorry i thought it went till eight so i um am not able to i apologize okay well then why don't we give you guys uh joyce why don't you go ahead and give your final remarks and then we'll let everybody rebut okay uh yeah i just want to say um you know my goal is to make every kid feel valued safe and um get an honest accurate education um, that is what public education is, is here for. Um, these lies and disinformation is really intended to kill public education, which is the you know, foundation of bedrock of our communities and our society. And um, public education primarily is meant for, as a fundraising tool, much like prisons for profit. Um, there's not much oversight. And again, my, my goal to protect public education and every student make sure they feel valued and safe in our learning through history. All right, so if you're gonna go, Joyce, uh, you'll be more than welcome to stick around. All right, uh, I got Bob, I got Charlie, who else has a rebuttal? Daniel, do you have one? I'll give you five minutes. Uh, Charlie usually likes to go last. Who else has a rebuttal? Ellen, I have one. one. Okay, all right. Uh, I got four so far. Anybody else? I got uh, Bob. I got Daniel. I got Ellen. I got Charlie. Who else? Ernie. Okay. Who else? Okay. I, I know Ernie. I got you. And uh, I don't know if uh, you want. Uh, I know you got guests with you there, but uh, anybody else who want uh, Ernie. Right. Do you have yeah, any um, Doug wants Doug wants to do a short rebuttal. Do you want to do a hey, short Doug. rebuttal? Really a rebuttal. I, I just wondered if we could get the uh, Joyce's email and and the gentleman. I, I came I came in late, so I didn't catch the gentleman's name. Uh, was okay. Presenting Joyce, if you want to put both your oh, emails in the chat. Okay, she just she just gave you uh, her email. School board disinformation. Okay, is this gonna be in the chat? Yes, it's in the chat. And she'll be able no, to, will. if you need an email address, I can give it to you. Okay. Doug, this, now I, I know, I noticed that uh, 
I noticed it, Ernie. I noticed that. Uh, um, I noticed that uh, Don's in the background. Don, do you want to do a rebuttal or not? No. Okay. No, okay. no but I, I, I did have a question. Uh, is, is the woman who's sitting in front of an NWSOFA sign, is, was she the speaker? She was one of them, yes. Okay. Is NWSOFA, if I could, this is my question is addressed to, uh, to the lady with the Joyce. NWSOFA sign. Is the that Joyce. Northwest Suburban Organizing for Action? Correct. Oh, uh, I think I used to be involved with, with that group. Are you all in Arlington Heights? Right. Yeah, we're based in that area, right? North West Suburb. Okay. Okay. I used to live in Schaumburg, and I, I used to oh. go to some of the uh, meetings. And oh, and, great. Uh, yeah, I'd be interested in getting getting contact information for y'all okay. as well, because uh, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I, I was actually involved in OFA back when it was still called Obama for America. That's how we started. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, if you I'm want to send something to email, we can certainly send you information. It's, uh, it's yeah. a very thriving group. All right. So how do I how do I get the how do I get the information? I mean, is it what did you say it was in the in this chat thing or something? She just put her email in the chat. Okay. I don't okay. I don't see it in there, but but well, maybe that's it up there. It's the it. school board so disinformation. Can, can't they, Tim? Yeah. School can, board disinformation at gmail.com and then nwsofa.org. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now let's. Uh, all right. We're so far. I got Bob. I got Daniel. I got Ellen. I got Ernie, and I got Charlie. Anybody else or not? Okay, Bob. I'm going to let you go first. All right. Well, all right, um, five, five minutes, Bob. Okay. So, uh, well, so what we have here tonight is, uh, you know, a perfect example of why uh, we need to get activated in. Uh, school boards and wrestle them out of the hands of the American Marxists that have taken them over. You know, they, they've taken over the universities, uh, they've taken over school boards, schools. A lot of this has to do with uh, the teachers' union. Uh, this, this is all part of the, the grand plan, essentially, of American Marxism. We have a giant cultural war going on here trying to uh, uh, take us from the principles America was founded on, individual liberty, you know, free markets, individuals, individualism, uh, versus the collective, the, you know, from, from each according to his ability and to each according to his need. Uh, so that's what the big fight is all about and all these, all these things. And uh, it's basically a Democratic Party, which is just a you know just just the name of basically the American Marxist Party. Uh, they want total Marxist rule, just like just like they have in communist China, where they run everything. And that's why they're that's why they're allowing immigration to flow in like it is, so they can have future voters for the American Marxist Party. And so like, while the illegals that are here that can't vote right away. They still get counted in the districting for, uh, you know, for senator or for, for uh, congressional representation. It's all part of the the scheme, and they can if they can divide us up, uh, you know, and create these dissensions between special interest groups. That again, that that works to their benefit. There is there is systemic racism in the United States, but it's not against blacks. It's against whites. And Asians, uh, and every and everybody knows this. We we get no, you know, white people get no special privileges for anything, uh, and we've had not only we not only uh, one bl a black president for one term, but two terms we've had a black president. Now, how could we be a racist, a systemically racist country, and have a black president that served for eight years? This doesn't make sense. Why do 3 million Blacks from Africa and the Caribbean apply for immigration to the United States every year? Because we're a systemically racist country? No, because we're, we op, we are, we're sy systemically opportunist. And those people know they can come over here and work hard and make money and do well. 
and that's and that's why they want to come. All this stuff about critical race theory and slavery, blah blah blah. And this is just making more excuses uh, for people's bad decisions, bad behavior. Is my five minutes up yet? No, you went. You got about three. You got about two more. Two more minutes. Yes. Um. So, uh, I want to recommend everybody go over to Twitter and follow a user called Libs of, of TikTok. <coughs> Pardon me, Libs, L-I-B-S, like liberals. Libs of tic, TikTok. And what that person does is, it's a woman actually that runs that. She gets TikTok videos that liberals publish on TikTok, and then she publishes them on Twitter because TikTok is really a young person's thing. And nobody 60 years old is on Twitter. Uh, nobody, nobody over you know the age of probably 39 is on TikTok. But you can go to Twitter and you can watch these things. And you hear the, these groomers, these teachers, public school teachers, elementary school teachers that, that are trans and, and all that stuff. And they're, they're throwing, they're having, changing pronouns. They have pride flags and trans flags in their classrooms. Every year what we're seeing is more and more impressionable children thinking that they're gay or thinking that they're transsexual and they don't even know what that means even. Some of them are so young. I even heard a recording of a, of a, of a teacher talking to a group of like kindergartners and she was telling them that she's not a boy or a girl and that they might be that way too. And then a little later in this, or in this conversation, you hear a little kid in the background say, yeah, he's a boy and a girl. He, he don't even know what he's talking about. You know, he's like four. Uh, but anyway, so watch, watch that. It's very interesting. And I also want to know about these, uh, <coughs> these banned books. Some of these, book, these books are explicitly sexual, talking about homosexual sex, very graphic, very explicit. And one of them, I remember there was a, a parent was trying to read the content of one of these books at a school board meeting, and they would not allow her to read it because they said it was inappropriate. I mean, but that this is a school book that was in their library. And it was talking about okay. little boys having homosexual sex with grown men. Okay. So those um, are the kind of books we're banning. All right. Thanks, Bob. Now, <laughs> okay. you had your five minutes, and I appreciate your, your, your things. Okay, Daniel, I'd like to have you go next if you can. You've yeah. got five minutes on the clock. Uh, please make your views clear and uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I, I have a couple of things I want to uh, uh, comment on. Uh, the little discussion that was on the COVID-19 vaccination situation seems really problematic to me because there's plenty of information out there. It's not being uh, conveyed by the legacy corporate media or the social media because it's all being censored. And the argument about information which goes against the, essentially the government public health narrative is, you know, it, it's called disinformation or it's called a conspiracy theory. The, these are memes which are used uh, to censor people. You know, that's the end of the conversation. You're a conspiracy person or you're just putting out disinformation, that kind of thing. And, and as I say, there, there's plenty of information out there. Uh, you know, uh, uh, if, if you go back to when Donald Trump came on the scene in tw say 2016, and uh, at that point in time, I, I think most people didn't figure Trump was going to get elected. And Trump was a huge problem for so much of the country, you know, there, there was, uh, uh, shock and awe after Trump got elected. But the reason probably that Trump got elected was that half of the country had tuned out the legacy media 
and they were tuned in to the alternative media. And, and so that's been understood. And without, I don't wanna go into uh, a whole thing about Trump, but it, but it seems like for the progressive part of the country, and I've been a progressive person most of my adult life, but the problem now is that the progressive people appear to have been seriously regressed, regressed in terms of their ability to tolerate frustration, to hear things that does not uh, accord with what they're believing. And, and you know, you saw it come on. Uh, once Trump was in, it was suddenly the celebrities and the, and the you know, people who are actually celebrities on the media you know, we're talking about, we've got to do Trump in, you know, Kathy, uh, I think her name is Kathy Griffin, holding Trump's severed head. They had that uh, play going on in Central Park where Trump's getting assassinated night after night and people commenting, you know, I want to punch him in the nose. I want to beat him up and all of this. And it was allowed to continue. It was basically green lighted and, and I think it's had a real negative effect on the progressive part of the country because you really can't talk to progressives very easily anymore. And, and uh, you know, the comment when, it, uh, uh, when Ellen was bringing up about COVID and then, you know, there was a statement, I, I forget uh, the gentleman's name, forgive me. Uh, he says, no, that's disinformation. Uh, you, I'm talking from facts. You're talking from beliefs. <laughs> you, you, what you think is a fact may not actually be a fact, or there may be information that contravenes your belief that something's a fact. And when we can no longer have this kind of dialogue between people without you know, one party or both parties becoming angry, it, it's a huge problem and it keeps our country totally divided. And uh, uh, so anyway, I just wanted to uh, make a few comments uh, concerning some of what was said. How much time do I have left, Tim? Oh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay, well then I, I think I made the points that I wanted to make. Thanks very much. Daniel, I appreciate it. Please stick around because we got some more, we got other people uh coming in. Ellen, you're next. Mr. Corley, you've always got interesting rebuttals. Let's hear about the uh, latest things going on. Okay, okay. well, thanks, Tim. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and thank you, Dan. That really is uh, very kind and um, calming on my nerves. Uh, this has been a, you know, a strange, I think this, this uh, whole thing has been used to divide us and um, into warring, you know, echo chambers. And actually I've done research that there is actually three echo chambers. I would, I wish I need to figure out how to prove it, but um, there's content people that could do that. It's, um, you know, and it's, it really has worked sadly to, you know, divide people. Cause I, I love, everything they said, um, the people about, I'm a progressive, I'm a teacher, I'm very concerned about, about this right wing uh, school boards. And it, you know, I've been listening to the news and monitoring it and it's, um, you know, NPR, what really gets me is that it's, there's a censorship going um, where they won't, if, if we had the fairness doctrine and the, Fed, the Federal Communications Commission, you should be able to have fair and balanced conversations. And that's put on the responsibility of the broadcaster. Otherwise they lose their license. The reason they put in the fairness doctrine and the FCC in 1948, the same time this whole world, you know, witch hunts were coming about and fascism, it comes down to fascism versus communism. And really the, this is, there's a, you know, the idea of, that corporations are people and you know broadcasters are people and so they've got all the money all the power all the political you know offices all of the control i mean that's fascism right and they love to 
that they've been saying this, you know, you're a communist. Um, we, we've got to stop this war on communism. And that's what I learned as a teacher and really a philosopher of education was, you know, we talked about Socrates and Rousseau and Dewey and, you know, they were the father of progressive education and it made sense. But what really makes more sense now than ever, it's about the sociological context right and it's like how does society treat progressives right, right that's how do you treat a um a dissent someone who questions authority and really they they burn them at the stake they do to them what they did to jesus they do what they did to socrates you take the poison i mean there's fascism and cons it's sad to see because i'm kind of a middle ground person, a conservative, a liberal, I don't know. I had voted, I thought, I voted for Reagan. I thought he made sense. And, you know, I kind of bought into all the stuff that maybe conservatives, we need some of that. And, you know, management is good. But once I came to realize that there's a manager's revolution, James Burnham, I mean, a fascism, you know, really the Bush family was financed Hitler. And uh, really it's Clinton, Bush, Obama, they're all part of an intelligent state that this is, uh, yesterday, I, I recommend people watch JFK. Um, you know, but the way Oliver Stone is brilliant. And he also gave a talk on Lex Friedman, but you know, Oliver Stone, all of his movies, El Salvador, they open your eyes, the untold history history of the United States. This is what education, public education should be for. And this is what we should be in the curriculum. You know, you teach Shakespeare, you you have to you really, they found out Shakespeare was actually the son of Queen Elizabeth. And he had a son with Queen Elizabeth. He didn't know it. I mean, but talk, and then they can't talk about it because he's, you know, half gay, he had sex with his mother, his kids said, and then they cut off everybody's heads. And, you know, um, this is, this is why his literature is so great. This is, you know, Hamlet's like to be or not to be, you know, uh, and it, you know, it's so my favorite guy, I know I'm out of time. My favorite so. mentor said, he goes, it's not about, I'd say it's not about the sex, is it? You know, we're going around taught to, you know, who do you marry? It's gotta be a boy, it's gotta be a girl. My nephew just came out gay, the brilliant one. And, um, you know, and I, my sister's okay with it, but my evangelical father isn't. They think it's in the Bible that, you know, he's, it's part of the devil's work. So, I, you know, I, it's just crazy times. I, I think love and kindness is, is the most important thing. And, but, and like, so Hungry Joe would say, he goes, I hope it's not about the sex. You know, this is, it's about okay. the, the existential truth. This is about love and, and, you know, God consciousness and selflessness and understanding and tolerance. Okay, Ellen, your, your, your time's up. Thank you very much. Uh, Ernie, you want to go next? Ernie, still here? Ernie I, Norman. I am still here. Go ahead, I really, Ernie. Uh, you got yeah, five minutes, Ernie. Five minutes. I wish I had five minutes in all the times when I needed five minutes or more. I don't really need very much time now. Okay. I'm, the main reason I, I signed on for a rebuttal had to do with the, the COVID and the vaccination issue uh, and the mask issue. And, and the notion that, that uh, uh, I guess I'm disagreeing with Ellen, the reason that we get vaccinated and wear masks uh, and we, we got vaccinated when we were little kids in school is not only to protect ourselves, to pro but protect everybody else. Because when you've got contagious diseases, you have to uh, you have to control it everywhere. And I and I've always when when they had the uh, the uh, uh, what should I say the 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 permission not to go along with people for religious reasons that don't want to get vaccinated. I don't agree with that. I mean, if you you know if there's a reason, if there's a public health reason for vaccinations, you should go along. Having said that, I think some of you know that I have never been vaccinated for COVID, at least not by the medical community. I've been vaccinated by Mother Nature twice uh, in, in having uh, COVID. And my doctors still tell me my most recent exam was at uh, March 31st. 
my most recent blood test and they're telling me my antibodies are still strong. And so long as the, anti, the natural antibodies are taking care of me, I won't get vaccinated, but when they start to weaken, or if they come up with a vaccine that covers the newest versions of the disease, in, in each case recently, uh, they had vaccinations, but not for the, not for the disease that was coming around. They, they came up with a COVID vaccine back in, what was it, January of 21 or January? I guess it was January of 21, sometime, uh, something like that. And that was fine. That maybe cut the Delta down a little bit. But then along came Omicron and, and they, they admitted that the, that the, vac, the uh, old vaccine didn't necessarily work against Omicron. Now they've got Omicron 2, version 2. And I haven't heard anybody say that they have a vaccine that really works against Omicron too. I would, I would get back. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I just don't want to do it if it's not necessary. And I think for me at this point, it is, is not necessary. And I was very put out with the whole, the whole process of uh, having to have a vax card and not be able to go into restaurants if you didn't have one. And in fact, in Europe, I am told, where they have had vax cards, they had vax cards long before we did, they acknowledged that if you had had COVID, that was equivalent to a vaccination in many cases. And I had documents from my doctors which said that I had antibodies. And right. sometimes- well, then how come were, you got it again? Uh, Charlie, it's rebuttal time. It, was a, different, it was a different variation, okay? I did not get the, guy I did gets not get the original version, I got advice. Omicron. Lots of lots That's of people who had all the Charlie, lots of people that I know personally who had all the vaccinations plus the booster got Omicron. And you know some of those people too, I'm sure. You just don't want to talk about it. Okay. Do all you right. do you let me well let, when it's your turn, Charlie, tell us whether you know some people who were fully boosted and still got Omicron. So anyway, okay. uh, I'll take a I'm not an anti vaxxer uh, I believe, I, and I believe they should be mandatory, and I don't think there should be religious exemptions. Uh, the only possible exemption would be if they can prove that it's bad for somebody, some individual's health. Now, there was also the question. I think somebody said that there's never been a death due to the vaccine. That's silly because whenever you vaccinate millions of people, as when we were young and they 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 vaccinated millions of us as kids, there were always a certain number who died in the thousands, but, or tens of thousands, but, but that's still a small number to them, to the, uh, as compared to the number of people who are protected. So it's all, it's better to get a vaccination, uh, you know, if you don't have natural antibodies or some other reason for not getting it, then, then saying, oh, well, the vaccine, the vaccines are dangerous. They're not dangerous, but they do. There are always a small number of people who do suffer from them. So we, we should, we should, uh, we should bring that out. And um, as far as the presentation, I enjoyed it. Um, I guess, I guess uh, my opinion is that even the wackos should have a forum. Uh, I know that I know, well, Tim, I mean, Tim was, was sanctioned because we had a speaker here a while back that was anti-vax. I think that's what it is, but Tim can elaborate on that when he talks. I'll, I'll comment on yeah, that. You, you, when, you, when you get on, you, you elaborate. And that's ridiculous to me. Uh, I think there should be a system where more or less anybody can look at a post that is, is false and, and flag it in some way so that people who read the post can see that it's been flagged. And if they choose, they can read the flag which says this post is BS because. And, uh, uh, but I, I'm, I, I am a pr pretty much a purist on free speech and, but, uh, you know, there should be a method with all of these uh, uh, social networks we have to determine if people are spreading information which is outright uh, incorrect or dangerous or slanderous. And I think that uh, that's all I can think of now. I may think of more later. Okay. Uh, uh, Doug, did you want to talk? Doug, no. did you want to say something? Okay. No, nobody else here wants to say anything. Okay. I got. Uh... I got myself and I got Charlie. Does anybody else want to go? Okay, Charlie, it's your turn. Um, Hold on a second, on. Tim. Don, all of a sudden. All right, all Don, if you if you want to get five minutes in, go ahead, Don. Go. 
you know, oh. well, I just well, heard what, well, all I wanted to say is I heard what Ernie was saying, and, and, and it's just that I, um, I was, uh, I did get vaccinated, uh, didn't kill me. Uh, however, I will say that, that when I got vaccinated, it was like having a mild case of COVID. And uh, so. Can everybody hear Don okay? Yeah, yeah. can y'all hear me? I th yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I have a pretty good strong voice, but but no, when I when I got vaccinated, it was like, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, I it was like having a mild case of COVID. I was kind of sick for a, for a couple of days, but uh, but I got better, obviously, and uh, and 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 I uh, and I'm glad I got vaccinated because because then I'm able to, uh, you know, when I go in a restaurant, they want to see your card, see if you've been vaccinated. I can just show it to them, like carry it around with me along with my, you know, my health certificate, and my international health records and uh, records of vaccination and all that stuff. And, eh, that's no big deal to me. I mean, I would rather, I mean, I'd rather be vaccinated than, than get COVID, you know, if it, if it comes down to it. Uh, I, you know, that, that, that's just a personal preference of mine that I, I prefer being vaccinated to actually getting, I actually did have COVID and that was horrible. That was absolutely horrible. I almost died. Don, did you have the original version? Oh, who knows? I mean, How long I got, ago? I got it in 2020, and it was yeah. Bad. That's the original version. It was. It was. It was. And that was that was rough. Like, I, for me, it was yeah, rough. Yeah, yeah. I was I was sick for a whole month, and and that was horrible. And and I would rather get vaccinated than have that happen to me. Now, if I may interject a comment here, when I got Omicron, I got the first time it was bad for a good solid week or more. Uh, when I got Omicron, it was like not even a bad cold, like a medium. <coughs> so it's very different. All right. You know, one, one little point, um, Here, here's because, Doug. because of what these two said, remember the vaccine was to keep you from getting a bad case of COVID. It never said you wouldn't get infected. It said the infection would be much less strong. And they never, the, the purveyors of the vaccine never said that it would completely prevent you from getting COVID. Okay. All right. All right, Charlie, you're next. I'll go after you. Uh, so go ahead. You got five minutes, Charlie. All right, I'll be eclectic as usual. Number one, uh, book banning. When I was a librarian, people would show up and they didn't like books I, I had. They didn't like things like Time Magazine, Newsweeklies. They even go back to the days of John Bircher's. Uh, what I would do, what I had was, was like a four or five page questionnaire that the patron had to fill out. I'd, I'd listen to him for about 15 minutes and I'd say, please fill this out and, and talk about a form that took forever to fill out. They never filled it out. Once in a while, if they did, I'd get, I'd slow walk it. The term is slow walk it through the board of directors. Oh, we didn't take it to, uh, to, we had other issues this month. We postponed the, this book ban. Uh, and again, another month and another month. So you just, and then they disappeared. They never showed up again. Um, regarding schools, this is, people don't realize you have to have tenure for teachers because loony, loony parents or loony groups of parents may show up and make all sorts of accusations against the teachers. Uh, this is, reinforces the need for uh, establishing tenure for teachers. I'm also amazed that somebody is upset because they want to become a school teacher, take absolutely no precautions against COVID, no vaccinations, nothing whatsoever that I could ascertain, not wear a mask and go into a school and infect all the entire staff and entire student body. And they say, this is unfair that I can't infect the school. The People's Response Network wants uh, uh, vaccination spots in each school all day after school. And I would go further and say, if you don't have, if both parents aren't vaccinated, don't send little Johnny to school. Uh, in, in addition to that. Uh, testimony, the trick to testimony is to stack. Those are speakers we see here, like I prepared many times, testimony before uh, public hearings. And you put your, you have a senior citizen, 
businessman, student, college student, uh, working and working mother, things like that. That's what you got to do. Stack the deck, uh, and have that's how you control the meetings. Uh, the other thing is regarding uh, they talked about FOIAs. I I must totally disagree with them. They kept saying you got five days or you get fined. I was a fee officer for the feds. I dealt with the state of Illinois attorney general. You can, man, and it's called discovery in law. I use it all the time in, in representing em, uh, employees in personnel matters. And you never get what you want when you ask. It's a slow process and no one ever gets fined. I've never heard of one yet. I, I, and you get 10 days. I don't know where they get five days. But yeah, no, the attorney general's never come down on anybody that I'm for. It's next to you got to keep after it. It's a slow process. Bob might know that, but things may change. But in my experience, is it's it's not a straightforward process to, as may have been presented. Uh, regarding the fairness doctrine, now when I buy a newspaper or turn on my TV, I don't want to listen to nonsense or read nonsense. And you want to have a fairness doctrine that editors can no longer execute any discretion in what appears in print or in the TV reported on the news. Well, who in the heck, who in the heck's gonna buy a newspaper if it's full of foolishness or conspiracy theories of Nazi takeovers? I mean, I mean, it might make interesting read once in a while something, but I, I don't think we want to have uh, our media uh, denigrated to something like that. Sorry, Ernie, anybody who gets COVID twice is not gonna give me advice. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta draw the line someplace. Uh, and last of all, uh, regarding, you've gotta take a lesson from the Chinese communists. And they have no problems with this. I love this guy. You can look him up. His name is uh, Li Feng, L E I F E N G. And he was in, in the army and he was the perfect guy, communist. And there's all kinds of episodes. He's a mythical folk here now. He's a young man, uh, passed tra tra tragically in an accident but he was the perfect communist, did all kinds of things. And all the school children are given episodes to discuss from the life of Li Feng, Li Feng, L-E-I-F-E-N-G. I mean, like when, when Li Feng went to school one day, they, I remember reading one and he found an expensive pen and he turned it into the teacher to find the legal, the rightful owner rather than keep it for himself. I don't know what's wrong with, with didactic teaching like that. Sounds like pretty good stuff to me. We should be, and I've never seen anything, as honestly, as a librarian in school library, that would raise any issue. I, I, I was thinking about it, I go, I never ran into anything that was controversial. Maybe, maybe I have no standards, but I was thinking about it, I go, where did all this nefarious literature come from? I, 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 I mean, okay. anyhow, thank you. Thanks for coming tonight, everybody. All right. I'm going to do a quick rebuttal myself here. And I'm not going to, I'm going to share screen on this because I think it's going to be a, a very good thing. Personally, I think we've all, in a sense, lost our sense of humor. We cannot do things like have memes like this go up, which I think is the newest uh, version of monkeypox. And, uh, you know, the one thing about the fairness doctrine I want to show you about, all you got to do to get the other side of any issue, for example, we go to the, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, Iranian website, which would be uh, www. Uh, Press, P R E S S P 
P-R-E-S-S-T-V.ir, you'll get the Iranian news broadcasts. You can go get your conspiracy theories by just Googling Alex Jones. You know, you can find him everywhere and anywhere. You know, American radio show host. He's available anywhere. You can get him. How Sandy Hook lies in the January 6th inquiry threatened to undo Alex Jones. I mean, the one thing I do know about the internet is that uh, free speech is in abundance. What you need to do is educate yourself on what's going on. Uh, what happened specifically to my UBIT account was we had, if we go to the uh, lecture library here in the College of Complexes, for example, and we go down to, uh, we'll just find COVID conspiracy. And this P-I-R-A-C-Y, we just go to COVID conspiracy or, or, or whatever. Just go to COVID down here. We'll find it real fast. Um, you know, we could we could definitely. Uh, well, anyway, I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. No, I got the wrong damn page up. I'm trying to find the lecture libraries. Just give me a second here. Yeah, there's no search engine on that page. Uh, what you can do is you can find out real quick by doing a control F on the search text pages and just go back to the College of Complexes website here. We just go back to the College of Complexes website and we go to the uh, uh, lecture library page. All you got to do is do a control F for find, put COVID in there and you can find out right there. All we have to do is post it to another website, which is BitChute. And there we got our video. So, you know, it's not like you can do it. There's also another one. It's called a B-A-N-N-E, B-Band -B Videos. Um, if I can find it real quick here, it's uh, B-A-N-N-E-D dot B-I-D-E-O and that video. You'll see everything else. There's in his whole format, Alex Jones. And you can find a ton of other stuff in here real quick that would, uh, if you're willing to be a conspiracy theorist or anything else, you'll... Uh, definitely find out what is going on with it with everything else now i'm going to stop the share of my screen because what i'm simply saying is this um the internet is a fun place to go it is a it is a has all the information around out there we need free speech and it's up to you to make your own choices about what you can do that's what freedom's all about whether you want to watch the conspiracy theorists it's one thing, whether you want to watch the Christian Hillsdale information, that's quite another. The thing is, this is nothing new. We did have uh, highly partisan newspapers in the last century. Uh, the whole bit of journalistic integrity started coming up right after uh, they had Pulitzer and uh, Hearst say, if it bleeds, it leads to sell circulation in newspapers. And that's where we got a lot of the sensational journalism did it. You could buy three newspapers a day at the newsboys hawking it. What they were interested in was circulation and what if it bleeds, it leads. The same thing I think goes with the internet. But the thing is too, you know, you also got to watch your sourcing, your other things. There's a ton of information out there. There is something called vetting information. I still prefer my sources like the BBC and NPR. And I also go to uh some of the other well-vetted sites for my own content. Yes, some of them are of a liberal bent, but I also um, go to a church on Sunday, which I also consider very well, both a Protestant and recently a Catholic church. So with that, uh, I encourage all of you to what I call free based net. Look, most of us go to the same eight to 10 websites every day, and we don't look at what's out there because there's a lot more content out there. For example, I've been recently digging into something called the moral philosophy of fossil fuels and I've been finding out arguments why we should be burning gas instead of uh, going to all renewables. I've also been learning more about nuclear power and, and some of the dangers of it, but also some of the benefits of it. For example, Ellen Oliver Stone, your famous producer, also did a movie called Pandora's Promise. He also spoke at the Thorium Energy Alliance Conference, and I got a chance to meet him. 
he is quite pro-nuclear, believe it or not. And his, his whole movie, Pandora's Promises, I think one you should watch. It'll tell you about this stuff. But the one thing I do know is that uh, it is very amazing what you could find out. I even watched Trump's speech today at when he, the one he gave at, uh, at um, the NE National Rifle Association. It was a good speech. He talked about uh, the fact that there were guns everywhere. And he said, we got to harden schools with security. With And then he suggested armed guards in the schools, which might have to come to that. We just can't, uh, you know, with, with all this out there, it's something else. All right, with that, my rebuttal is done. Since our speakers have gone, is there anybody else who'd like to make a comment? Vicky, anything or uh, no? Okay. Uh, Charlie, you want to say anything to wrap us up with? Or Daniel, anything else to wrap us up with real quick? The only thing is about watching things about nuclear. As I, one of the things on my agenda is to rewatch. It's been years, this movie called About Karen Silkwood, which is something I guess is just liberal propaganda against nukes. But you, you, I don't know why you advertising us. Why are you advertising nonsense? And it's it's not, not because it's not look nonsense. Look up these sites with nonsense. Why? Surely the thing I is that. Go ahead, Ellen. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Honestly. But you know, yeah, you recommend me. good sites. You There's recommend some good, good sites, sites out there. Ones. Go ahead, Dan. Can I make a comment? Uh, Ellen, um, Ellen, please go ahead. Then we'll go to Dan. Go ahead, Ellen. Yeah. What I'm. You know, to your uh, point, Tim, and I figured speak, yeah, but the problem is we need one version of science, one version of medicine, one version of vaccination, one version of, so that's where you have to have, you know, Michael Yaden and these people who are really saying that it's dangerous speaking trans, you know, with Gallo. I mean, the same thing happened with AIDS, you know, that there's the Peter Duesberg who Andy Anderson gave me the book at the beginning of the pandemic. And I, at first I'd hear him say AIDS isn't really a virus or HIV isn't a virus. And I mean, I'm the type that listens to what does he mean? And then I, I watched uh, this Nobel prize winning guy about it's called um, the Jim Allison story about breakthrough about exactly what is a, the process of a micro of a virus and how does the immune system work? And by looking at the immune system, why it didn't work with cancer, but it did work with virus, he was able to see, and people should watch that exactly, he developed the thing that cured blood cancer. So when I'm talking about my concerns with the vaccine, it's based on science of, of the microbiology that is, uh, the mRNA thing, there's just tons and tons of evidence that it gets into your, your blood, your immune cells, your, it, it clings there. And then we'll, you know, it breaks down. It causes like Parkinson's. It's the same process. These are medical journals. So I'm saying they, we need one version of medical journalism, microbiology, but with this, you've just got, you know, you should do it. And it, it's just an onslaught of misinformation that really like turns liberals against people like me who are just independent scientists you know and I'm trying to be a teacher but I end up like just I just give up you know I mean I've, I've given talks in Dallas they let me give the talk but um people didn't just yell at me and um it, it's it really is like it's so no like one. the McCarthy no era one. so mm -hmm. And also, Ellen, Karen Silkwood, I tried to find the video. You can't find it, the Karen Silkwood movie. So this is when they talk about censorship. That's been removed. There's things, you, you can't find the thing about the 87 acres of hell about Camp Douglas. So when things that expose it's the state crimes against democracy, that's what he's talking about. I'm open to, if, if Robert, if Oliver Stone talks, I wanted to watch that Pandora um, because he, if he believes, I consider the source, you know, I want to, if I listen to that guy and I, I intuitively know whether I trust him and then I go and investigate it for myself. But right now, I mean, with this, this 
crazy vaccine is something it's you know only the tea party Ella, you know misinformation Ella, say something make it about up. your book yeah that a guy gave a book report at the college on that hiv book you mentioned and he Peter said Duesberg. it was absolutely worthless he said it was well, worthless it, you need to, that's, it's been a discussion that needs to be debated. That's right. We need to have a debate for yeah, you think that's a good back book? and forth among knowledgeable scientists. I said scientists. it was worthless. Okay, well, Daniel. You know, there's a lot of people that say that. That's where the money is. Pfizer and okay, Fauci okay. pay people to say it's well, the worthless. They're the, the only college. ones that get the grants. down this rabbit hole. Dan, Daniel wants to they, say something real they quick. They threw out <laughs> myth for the nonsense. same reasons. Okay. Well, that's that's what worries me, you know, is if that's your opinion and you are the editor and you you're Fauci, you get to make the decision. So Duesberg doesn't get a grant and that person gets thrown out of school and he doesn't get tenure. You know, this is what, you know, we saw in Inherit the Wind, you know, the guy with Darwin is getting thrown out of school because he's teaching Darwin. This is, you know, you it's like, why are you, it's almost unbelievable that they would do that. But it, it just shows when you get politics into evolution and religion, you know, I mean, it's like, I can't believe we've gone, you know, we went one step forward and 10 steps back. And that's, I thought that's why it was an excellent talk because those people, I believe what they're saying and it's rational. I didn't, except for the vaccine. And so that's why, you know, forget it. I'll go to Georgia. You know, that's, that's all you can do is just say, right. you know, go to Texas. I mean, Daniel, that's how um, Texas is getting a lot of, you know, people. Okay. Because back, if, I, if you make me take Ellen. that vaccine to teach, I can't do it. I got to go. Okay. Ellen, mm -hmm. thank you. Daniel, you have a comment, so please go ahead. Yeah, I did a couple of things. Just one thing is I want to mention, uh, I'll be giving a presentation here at the college June 18th on hoarding. I think you ah. find it pretty interesting. It'll also go over some concepts that are actually relevant to what's going on with some of the other things we're talking about. And uh, just, just to, you know, when I, I, I remember back a few years ago when I was coming to the college in a very regular fashion, it was a stretch of time, uh -huh. and I'd get up at that rebuttal <laughs> and, and I would say, uh, we're in abrupt exponential climate change. And, you know, I'd say something like, uh, if, if I were a young person, I think you ought to wait for maybe five years or so to see how it goes before you have a child. And of course, you know, people, you know, they, they listen to that, but it doesn't have any chance really of, of penetrating because, uh, uh, again, the, the information that's necessary to go there is essentially censored. And when we have this kind of brutal censorship and these arguments about it, it's very maladaptive for us as a group of people. You know, there's individual evolution, if you understand that or you think that's how things go. There's also group evolution. And if we have massive censorship in a group, like a country or a society, then it's very maladaptive because we do not have the information that we may need to make decisions and to move ourselves forward. Um, and and uh, it, it's just, it's, it's very regrettable. One last thing I, I would just throw out about the, uh, the COVID situation. Uh, there, there, there is plenty of information that is out there, both pro and con. And, and I'm just going to put out here, well, maybe I won't put, I, you know, I, I, something I need to ask. This is being posted up on YouTube. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I know from some other forums or stuff that I've, I've been with over the past couple of years, if you say anything about COVID, for example, or the vaccines that do not uh, uh, meet the standards of the acceptable public health narrative, you get taken down and people don't want to be taken down. But I think that's a huge problem because then we get all this self-censorship. Well, I don't want to be taken off of Facebook or taken out of YouTube or something like that. And then everybody learns to self-censor, which I think is a problem. But anyway, well, that's... Uh, 
Yeah. If you if you suspect it, you just go to you just go to bit shoot. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of those. You know, there, there's a lot of stuff out there. Yeah. Tim never posts anything anyway. Right the, now, the idea is to have one version of the truth. Of, what are they teaching in medical school? I, you know, my doctor. Okay, he, Ellen. He acknowledged that I that I knew what I was talking about because if these patterns are there, it could still okay. continue. I don't you have any their, their information is censored. You know, so. You have no concept of science. I do too. I've got like a philosopher of science, Charlie. <laughs> well, you're a misinformation. I mean, and why does the science. FBI get to determine what is science? Why you're not you don't <laughs> investigate, you just carry a gun and, and mock people and mock truth. And that's that's your job is to go around, you know, co and tell pro, you know, erasing truth. You know, yeah. you like we you really shouldn't be in control of this whole forum. You hey, know, hey, hey, you want to violate the aggressive Ellen. science to have a voice. Personal All right. Attack. Okay. Any, anyway, um, at this point, I'm going to adjourn the college. Uh, we'll keep the discussion open for a few minutes. I do have to go see my mother in a little bit because she is starting to get a little bit crazy. My sister had called me up earlier saying that she's going a little nuts. So, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but I'll turn, the, uh, turn the controls over to somebody else. No I'll, I'll turn the somebody. control over to somebody else, but I'm going to okay. stop the recording. Right go. and stick around. For Bye. A few Good days. to see Don there. Hi, Don. Ellen, thanks okay. for coming tonight. Okay, All right. All right. Okay. I'm going to re I'm going to stop job. the recording. College of Count Texas officially adjourned.